Hello and welcome to session number 51 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Welcome back. We have taken a short break and now we have returned to our beloved table that is full of drawings, I've noticed. I like it. It's so full of life and it's so happy compared to the terrible things that are about to happen to you today. It's called a coping mechanism. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, with all this out of the way, I know we have a person who is very, very ready and excited to give uh, the recap uh, of the last events. Oh, thank God someone is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm zooming in on Matt's side of the table. Matt? Oh, that's Matt. me. Matt? Oh. <laughs> If you look here, you'll see my recap summarized in an emoji, actually, because my production value is incredible, and I've been prepared for this for uh, nearly a year. Wow. You were ready for this okay. recap a year ago. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's incredible. Uh, so this is what happened last session. Oh, thank you, audience participation. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, last time... Uh, we started the session with the group arriving in a lightly flooded uh, Orm's Tower, uh, with Orm immediately marching up and questioning us about what has happened. Uh, the group has a mixture of sour and somber attitudes, and Lechkree is arguing with her mom in the background. Um, her mom believes that Lechkree is not going to destroy the village simply because her father is there, and Lechkree denies this and says that she would love nothing more than to kill her dad, probably. Um, she's shut up by Pip, literally, and Pontifex, uh, who then have a brief argument tiff and talk about their return. Um, Orm invites the group to his study, where we can recap the events that led to today. Afterwards, Orm offers help in the form of his mechanical constructs, but is unwilling to send an army in the interest of preserving the Plernan Ladarian status quo. The group understands, accepts, and thanks him for his assistance of one singular metallic bird. Uh, Orm offers to block the door, but Pontifex insists that he would prefer it if some of them were to come through. Uh, Orm leaves the party after tending to their wounds, with Pontifex leaving for the study, claiming that he will never lose to an enemy mage again. Uh, the rest of the party discusses options. Miravest claims the villagers would likely trade Tekka for her and her daughter, and Devamia comes to terms with her rapid relocation to the Zasberg Peninsula. Um, in the other room, Orm outfits Squeak with his new deployable armor, claiming that it's still missing most of its features, but it's seemingly capable of adjusting to Squeak's shape-shifting and can fire magic missiles once a day. Uh, eventually, the group finds sleep in their respective beds slash dog beds, and everyone, sans Pontifex, is awoken in the night by the sound of rushing water flooding the basement of doors again. Uh, they all rush downstairs to see a large silvery skinned twin snake tailed demon emerging through the doorway, uh, which glances across the party, smiles at Pip weirdly, and then disappears back into the water. Uh, left behind is a pale gray skinned woman, completely drenched. The, the demon pierces back through the water, hand outstretched towards Pip, offering him stones with circular symbols. Pip takes the stones, and the demon pats Pip's head, uh, ruffling his hair specifically. Um, and says that he's so proud of him before retreating back into the water with the flood water of the basement following him back through the portal. Um, the rush of water knocks over most of the party, and the demon again, uh, not knowing how to actually do a proper exit, reaches through the wall or the door again uh, and takes Talix along with him. Uh, after the chaos, Brooke approaches the new stranger on the floor with sword in hand. She reacts by pulling her shield and introducing herself as Virian. Brooke leaves to retrieve Pontifex, while Pip and Squeak learn more about Varian, who claims to be someone who decided to sail into the Forbidden Oceans and can confirm that the ocean is haunted and full of demons, uh, which Squeak corrects as devils and specifies that the massive silvery snake devil was Magdra Madracatch? I think I said it right? Uh, and that she is lucky to be alive. Close enough. Brooke returns to Pontifex, who's clearly in a daze, explains the situation, and Pontifex rushes the door to open it and accomplishes nothing. Uh, various <laughs> exploring doorways in the tower while the party talks about how to get Talix and eventually Pontifex uh, tracks her down and discusses boats. Uh, he learns from the boat lady uh, that she was spared by the devil. I'm going. 
There we go. Hello? Hello? I uh, also dropped from TTS. Yeah. Yes, yeah. my my the reason why the music bot is being a bot is that it's actually my upload. Stream is down. Ah. Okay, I was making sure I didn't disconnect and I'm not just talking to myself. But I can hear you. Oh no, you did. That's you have to redo fine. your summary. <laughs> okay, so the group arrives in a lightly flooded <laughs> orange tower. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, he he talks to to Virian about boats, um, and he learns she was spared by I the think devil. The stream's down, right? <laughs> yeah, what? that's God. That's fine. <laughs> you just go You're ahead. You're doing so him. good. <laughs> yeah, I give up. Other <laughs> stuff happens. We wake up, <laughs> and we're, we're gonna go through the door with we're our army. <laughs> with the singular Are we door. taking our army? There, so it didn't happen. Yeah. We had a very busy session. Okay. It was very intense. Somehow we didn't get to anybody's backstory. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> that is right, we're getting there. There's no time for that. The someday, dreams someday. were next. Can you guys hear me clearly? I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I have... The stream is not working very, very well. Oh, but I can, no. but the whole time I could hear you very well, so I'm not sure what's happening. Oop. Here's my table. Should be back. I see it. There it is. Hello. Hello. Dun, dun. What are we going to call this inspiration die? Oh, is the game back up? Yes. Oh, I don't see it. No. It's here. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's not, not in my list. Are we not friends anymore? Oh, I will no. just invite you again. Did you kick me? No. There's only a certain amount of spots on your friend list left. And I <laughs> Guys, I can only have I can only have four <laughs> friends at a time. Oh, made. <laughs> well, Back I'm, to MySpace rules. It's okay. I, I feel okay knowing that whenever you're in a crisis and you were looking for someone to help this crisis, I was who came to mind. <laughs> uh, in the form of removing me from your friends list, but at least I was the first one. <laughs> I I'm just gonna call this forever alone inspiration. <laughs> Sad inspiration. You have been unfriended. No, it's not true. I can't yeah. even say it as a joke. I feel bad. These hurts. Okay. So, Anyways, are we back up? It looks like everything is fine. As far as I can tell. Mm. Helobites are flowing. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, then I will pick up where I left off and hopefully where the stream left off. Um, <laughs> after Pontifex talks to Varian about boats, he learns that she was spared by the devil and must find a door. Uh, in exchange for things that Virian wants. The two rejoin the party, uh, relearn Virian's name, and she officially joins the party. Eventually, everyone retires to their sleeping arrangements, and the dreams happen. First dream, we see Pip. Uh, Pip's dream of sleeping in and missing breakfast in his family's cabin and taking his packed breakfast to the pond to skip stones with his dad, eventually being scolded by a demonic squeak for skipping rocks on his roof before he joins them in their fun. <laughs> Second, we see Virians, where she wanders towards a mirror and upon seeing her reflection, realizes that she is, in fact, a fishwoman. <laughs> uh, third, we see Tekka's dream of following someone down hallways and corridors, but never being able to catch them by either losing sight of them or finding dead ends and locked doors. Uh, fourth, we see Pontifex dreaming of being a frog on a lily pad. Uh, he sees a fly and his froggy stomach growls froggily, uh, missing it with his tongue. <laughs> He sees the face of the fly, revealing it to be Talix, 
as it flies away. Uh, Pontifex hops lily pad to lily pad trying to catch Talix, but keeps missing. Uh, eventually, a hand from the lake reaches up and snatches Talix fly out of the air. Pontifex instead hits the hand with his froggy tongue, burning himself and watching as Talix flies dragged beneath the surface, leaving Pontifex alone and still hungry. Uh, and lastly, we see Brooke dreaming of being at a hot spring up in the mountains with distant clouds and a fog far below. He's with his old crew, his old friends, Leo, Leah, Sonny, and the rest of them. Uh, he feels <laughs> safe, but wrong. Leo is suddenly about to fall from the springs to a cliff, uh, but Leah reaches to catch him. Dense fog overtakes the scene, and when it clears, they're both gone. Brooke is also alone, uh, and a sudden heavy rainfall pours onto him. Uh, he looks again, and it is clear, and he is still alone. Uh, in the next moment, he sees his friends, all cheering, flying down roaring rivers, and he rushes to join them, no longer alone. Uh, and then we all wake up, and we regroup downstairs with Pip's uh, enthusiastic insistence. Much to our amazement, Orm provides us with not just one mechanical bird, but several, and also mechanical crabs, and giant mechanical snakes, and a mechanical owlbear, uh, and apologizes for his modest contribution. <laughs> uh, Virian and Brooke ask Miravesk about information about the village, and what we learn is that brute force will be difficult. Uh, so we decide to go the long way to avoid bursting back through the portal door. Oh, that was it. Busy session. You didn't Good even word. leave the building you were in the entire time. And still so much happened. Well, yeah, but we left. did like in spirit. And we didn't have to leave the building. Everything outside the building came into it. <laughs> the plot is coming. You can't hide. <laughs> knock, knock. It's me. Plot hooks. <laughs> I'll be taking Talix now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Let's remove this inconvenience now. I say we just forget about Tekka and instead go straight towards the ocean and try to fish back up Talix because the sooner that we have him in the party, the sooner we can have a real plan to get Tekka. Tekka's fine. Talix is drowning. We, we need Talix to come up with a plan to save Tekka. Yeah. Oh well, I'm the so Savar's sorry, Tekka. Murder. No, no, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I get it. I get it. We Tekka's do need Tekka to come. Fishing rod. We do need Tekka to come with a plan to save Talix, though. Yeah. So we're in this. We're oh. Yeah, but he would <laughs> have a great plan, but he would just say it in like some form of poetry that no one would understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. So we, ta we uh, left off right as uh, your group, followed by this uh, tiny army of mechanical creatures, uh, chose to go through this particular door, the one you originally took, um, that eventually led you uh, to Dustfall and later to Narashk. Uh, you're all in the process of squeezing through. Uh, some of the mechanical creatures that you're taking with you um, uh, I need to, like, squeeze through the exit way and seem to struggle a little bit. Uh, but, like, they're, they're each passing through one by one. Um, and the only, the only creature that uh, hesitates uh, is Lashkri, who stands uh, one foot away from the from the magical door and he's looking through it uh, into the forest uh, that uh, this uh, uh, magical passage leads to and she, she has her arms crossed uh, and she's tapping her foot on the ground um, and as like her mother turns back to look at her and some of you pause uh, uh, instead of marching off and also turn back to see uh, Leshkri says what if I don't come though? I mean, I don't think anyone was forcing you. Yeah, what do you want to do instead? Well, there's all these other places, and she, she just gestures at the other doors in the room, and 
I was thinking that perhaps I could go and explore. And you guys won't have to worry about me ever again. And I think we're all gonna be happy about it, right? Because you don't have to worry about me accidentally zapping you or drowning you in your sleep. And you don't have to worry about uh, uh, me flooding my home village. So everybody's happy, right? Right? Is that they no worry? objections. You weren't worried about... Yes, it's a... you're supposed to worry. It doesn't matter. I'll just not go. It's probably too dangerous for you anyways. Yeah, who knows what could happen to you? Not being able to fend for yourself. I, I can... I can handle myself just fine. Uh, sure, yeah, uh, in the wilderness is one thing, but uh, facing down a horde of uh, your people uh, might be too much for you. Well, that sounds like a dream, actually, but uh, I'm doing you a favor. It would have to be a dream. <laughs> uh, Miravesk uh, appears to be the only person who has a bit of an issue with this, um, and... She she takes a step back towards the the door, uh, and says, "I am not comfortable with you going um, anywhere alone." Lashky well. doesn't particularly seem to care, um, but d despite. Uh, Despite Leshkri's uh, uh, non-enthusiastic reaction to this, uh, uh, Mirvesk turns back and says, If my daughter does not come with us, I need to go with her. I mean, it seems to me like you could use some bonding time anyway, so sounds like it's a win for everybody. I don't particularly think that uh, any of you would be helpful. <laughs> what about your dad? Don't you want to save him? Leshkri puffs out her cheeks and looks away and says, I'm sure he's fine. After jumping their own people and fighting them to help you and us escape? Yeah, yeah I mean, the worst thing they will do to him is just banish him. Hey, maybe I'll meet him out here while I explore. Didn't seem like your village is much about banishing and rather killing the people so they don't go for their rules. Oh Maybe no, we definitely banish like people. like you, but uh, I mean, it's been a while since so. we have. Either way, my dad is none of your concern. If you just wait a day or two, you could leave with him. Nope, don't care. What's your problem? Or if he gets in the way. I mean, I understand if you're afraid to come into a tense combat situation like this. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> she... she it, it, it definitely... It's very obvious that a pride is being hurt. But the she's just... There's no place for children. Now let's go, Pip. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> um, Leshkri walks off towards uh, uh, some of the other doors she's beginning to try some of them and they're like all locked a uh, tin artist watching this um, from, from near the stairs kind of glancing back at you guys as if trying to gauge how you feel about this um, and Miravesk steps back partially through the door uh, and looks back at you and she she looks very conflicted uh, and she says I 
<laughs> I am a mother to many. Uh, right now I need to look after Leshkri. You can... You can do this. Yes? Have you given us all information you can give us? Everything I have. This is my first jailbreak. Should be easy. As easy as it gets. Hmm. Well, as Varian said, it's probably good that you have some alone time with her. So, thank you for your information. <clears throat> Can you at least tell us which door you're going through so we know where to send your dad? Um, so... Leshki tries this one and it doesn't open, and she tries this one and it doesn't open, and then she walks back in front of the, um, the one that you went through. Tries this one, it doesn't open, and then tries this one. Uh, and when she when she sees that it opens up into this like grassy uh, field, uh, she she will just say, "Yeah, good enough," and she steps through. Which hmm. one's that? This one. Yep. This one. Oh, she'll die. <laughs> Don't kill her. <laughs> what if she finds the other Kroko <laughs> werewolf? <laughs> First thing. Um, Mirask again looking a little hesitant, but she steps fully back into the tower. Um, she's looking in the direction where her daughter disappeared to, um, and keeping it brief uh, uh, as she needs to chase after her uh she she says i i trust you with the fate of my people okay i i think you are good <clears throat> if you go out that door and keep heading west you will hit a town sooner or later Called Simlilon. So is if you it, need to stay somewhere. Is it a safe place? I mean, as safe as any town can be. Right. I guess. Nowhere is safe as long as your daughter keeps acting like that. Yeah, you probably should stop her from trying to take down Simlilon. <laughs> or it might not be the safest place. That is... <clears throat> that is why I must go with her. And I... I apologize. I know she is not... the best version of herself yet. But it is my fault that she is like this, and... now I... I need to help her. Perhaps when we meet again... she will be more kind to you. Hmm. I owe you so much. I, I do hope to see you again. Hmm. Well, I'd Apples? assume... Uh, what was that? Go ahead. Well, I'd assume that if you ever need some advice, our friend Orm over here would be willing to help out. Right? In art from the back. Uh, yeah, sure. And like you see him, you see, I really see him winking at you. His enthusiasm <laughs> is infectious. <laughs> <laughs> and Muravask with, with a brief nod um, runs off. After Leshkri. Um, and you hear the the door slam behind her. Uh, but then you, you see Tenart walking up to the door. 
and opening it again and sending one of his mechanical ravens outside. <laughs> and then he closes the door again, and as he's wa uh, walking towards the stairs to go back uh, uh, in the basement, he just glances at you and says, I'll keep an eye on them. Thank you. Don't let them destroy too many cities. And luckily, our towns do not murder people for being outsiders, so... <laughs> Is this something that we should be actually worried about? She talks a lot about um, flooding cities and destroying towns now. Um, is this the best idea? I still learn some way. Not her mother. It's not my job. Nor is it yours. I'm less not... concerned about her, more about, you know, towns. Is the town's job to defend itself from threats? There. What are you going to do? Kill her here and now? No, she just seems, uh... We just don't all seem all that concerned. Is... Is all. There's only so much you can do. This thing's, uh, more pressing. Problems are Tekka and Talix missing. And I'm not sure how much she is willing to actually harm people she doesn't know her own hometown. Yeah, no doubt. She did that back there. But random people? Maybe the interaction with some strangers that aren't us can do for her or can do good for her. The fact that she even hesitated to come along and wreak havoc. I think you're right. Alright. Is everyone ready? Do we need any more preparations? Unless you know a place I can get some more ammunition, but I doubt it. I look at Orm. Uh, Do you have, yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything that can help her out? I, I, any what? Bullets. Oh. Oh pistol. no 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 no! I, I, I don't I don't touch yeah. the stuff. I figured. Um. Form is not a gnome. Well, neither is she. I think. <laughs> Form <laughs> is not a thief. Neither am I. I mean, not not in this case, at least. You probably have enough time on the way to the village to explain us how you got that gun, because our past run-ins with gnomes haven't been ending with them giving us them, rather than shooting at us. I mean, it's a long story, but... It's a long way? Fair enough. Right. So you guys set off. Um, Virion, there hasn't been a whole lot of an explanation uh, for you as to why um, this door opened up to, uh, like each of the doors that you have been able to, to open in the building uh, led to an entirely different kind of, of, of environment. I can speak. Um, Not the weirdest thing she saw that day. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Um, right now, you have stepped uh, into a, a jungle. Uh, this, uh, this vegetation is unlike anything you have seen on Plurna. Uh, it's like everywhere you look, you see a type of tree, you see a fruit, you see a bird that you have never seen before. Um, and even what little you have seen of Lidaria, um, this doesn't really match any environment that you have visited here. It feels like somehow you are very far away from where you were before. Um, there is little time to question it, though. Um, although you are free to interrogate your companions as much as you would like. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, so this is um, normal. Or are you lot just to walk through doors and end up 
all, all over the place. Yes. Well, it Fair is enough. now. It wasn't before we found the tower. What the fortune I find. Well, uh, in the process, you know, uh, we were fighting Orm. He was trying to kill us, I believe. Oh. Not that worked out well for you? I think it worked out best for both sides. Sounds like that's also a long story. It's a good thing we have a long walk. <laughs> yeah, let me pull up my uh, my 11 other recaps and I can just go through them for you. And you can have them. Uh, this is what happened every fifth session. Wait, we started uh, maybe uh, session one. Hmm. Mm. I don't know which one that was. I think that was my recap. <laughs> If you could each give me, like, a short blurb, but, like, go one at a time. Uh, yeah, because mine starts with previously, so mine definitely was not the first. <laughs> <clears throat> but, yeah, I guess without going too much into detail, Orem was after us. And then when we finally confronted him after running, it turned out that we are in an opposite wavelength. And he had joined this tower, which he didn't build. And this tower had a lot of doors that led to different places. And we don't know yet where every door leads. As you might have noticed, we didn't expect one door to bring a devil and you through it, or open up to under the ocean. But yeah, we're figuring that out one by one. So, but interesting. Has he, does he know anything about the tower, or is it just sort of a lucky find for him? Hmm. Or you haven't asked him? Oh, well, we have. It's it belonged to an old friend of his, apparently. Or well, not really a friend. Someone he knew for a very long time. And we have been looking for him as well. Not sure if you've ever heard of someone named Jamiel Fleetfoot Wood. I have. I have a bone to pick with him. Well? Is that seemingly everyone else? Yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying is that if you're going to write a guide that says the oceans are dangerous, you need to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> if we ever meet him <laughs> you, you can ask him that but yeah we have found these stores obviously and that was the easiest way to get past the peninsula luckily and us being able to get back from that village was just pure coincidence So there's doors, other places that will lead to the tower. You don't just need to go from the tower first. I'd assume so. Huh. I'm not quite sure how exactly that works. But I mean, from the last door that we, from the two doors that we used to get into the turret, uh, to into the tower, one was pretty much open. The other required some kind of puzzle for us to solve. So I don't just, think it's that easy to just get in. From what I was seeing, the most of those doors in there that didn't open, um, they seemed locked, but not uh, anything I could do anything about from that side. So assuming we can find the other sides, maybe we can open them there. Orm is also working on figuring out the doors from the inside. So if we have get you, any progress on that. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, this seems like the obvious solution, but have you tried breaking any of them? I don't think we have. <laughs> I don't think we have tried that. I don't think we knew they could be broken until Magdragach broke that one. 
I mean, that's way from the first thing I tried. Sometimes brute force is the answer. Hmm. Maybe he has a door he really dislikes the next time we're there. Uh, we or can maybe, try that. or if there's ones that you know is uh, at least relatively safe on the other side, so you won't open it and I don't have lava spilling in or something. That is a good point. If there can be surprise demons and surprise oceans. I'm sorry, devils. Not demons. <clears throat> but yet, I obviously don't think it can be any door. This last door was connected to Jamuel. And I guess all the other doors have to as well. Fascinating. So maybe the more we find out about Jamil, the more doors we will be able to open. Seems like a logical progression of events. So, you might be one of the first people I've seen with a gun that isn't a gnome. Not surprising. They don't get them out easy. What of yourself did you have to sell to get that? Sacrifices were made. Um, it was a gift for her heroics during the war. Hmm. Do I believe her? Do you? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> uh, when you say it, the war, I believe you. <laughs> you be more specific. Uh, what, what were they calling it? The silent war? The, the long one. Ended. Uh huh. Did you participate in it? Did your parents participate in it and they gave it to you after that? No, I fought in it. Before it? Not to be rude, but uh, I, you know what? I feel like I have this right. How old are you? Uh, <laughs> what, what, what year is it now? Um. Or eleven fifty three. Okay, after, after like three hundred, you stop losing track. Um, oh, you're old. I'm an elf. What? I'm surrounded time. by old yeah, people. I'm sure, like <laughs> you're, you know, you're like maybe three hundred or so. So I think about four hundred and thirty, give or take. Like three hundred and thirty, <laughs> uh, maybe. Like we round down. <laughs> <laughs> we're down to four hundred and twenty. Does that make you happier? No. Wait, this is a better question. What year were you born? Really good question, Dorian. Right <laughs> so much math that needs to be done right now. I, I do so much math. What, you don't was... have like a whole timeline of events with exact dates? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Oh. <laughs> that would be crazy if you did. It's, like I can't uh, even imagine someone actually doing that. I was I was born in uh, six ninety six. Mm -hmm. Who's older? Is <laughs> yeah, she older than you, Pontifex? Uh, I mean, look at us. Who could possibly believe that she is older <laughs> than me? That is absurd. Wait, really? Oh. <gasps> I didn't know there was anyone older than you, Pontifex. I'm not even old. I'm not, I mean, not that old. I'm not as young as I used to be, but I have good years left. Maybe another 300, 400 or so. I mean, nothing kills me first. So mean nothing kills you first. <laughs> don't, don't give him ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Well, 400 that something years. Threatening. And you still didn't know the oceans were full of devils? Okay, I didn't. I've only been out of this ocean for like a year to maybe. Not even a few months. The oceans back home are a little, little safer, a lot safer. Were you a, a sailor? Yes, for most of my life.
Well, the the rivers are fine here, other than the the Atarava. Rivers are restricting for the open water. So did you come here because you thought the oceans would be better? Just needed a change. <laughs> Same. There's not much of a... Nothing much left for old sailors back, back home, so... Bigger new adventure here? Well, we really need to get Tekka back, because he's the only one who's close to my age. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him back. <clears throat> but yeah, now you fought in the war. I did. Or the elves, I'm assuming. And with I the mean, gnomes. All of us. Elves, gnomes, we lion. Okay, Alright, that at least yeah. makes me more comfortable in bringing you along. Not to like get too hung up on this sort of thing, but uh, you said this uh, pistol of yours was a gift uh, for heroics in the war. I would presume that that would imply that you received it uh, during or shortly after the war. During, yes. Uh, like, how old would you say this pistol is? Uh, Hypothetically. Let's see, what's it? Yes, now it's, uh... It was about 9... 47 or so that I got it. It's, it's uh, old. Okay, um, okay, okay. You would have had to have gotten it after the war. Uh, after war, okay. Yeah, sorry. Should have my back, sorry. <laughs> oh, no! Then Okay. They were after. like firearms were invented shortly after Lidari was discovered, which was after the war. Then it's newer than that. Mm. Mm. Other than that. Still stands. Sorry, I might occasionally have a detail like that. It's just it's okay. uh, I threw a lot of information at you, I'm sorry. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Gonna change that. And cannon. <laughs> and so he has the first gun ever the prototype <laughs> of, of prototypes it Why wasn't so even invented it was just made Why so hard to get ammunition for it no one makes it anymore yeah. hmm. okay it is funny that uh, that pistol is older than some of the people we know I mean I'm so funny thing isn't it you know it is. I'm, gl I'm glad you said this. It is a funny thing. Anyways. Feels it like broke. just yesterday I didn't have a 7 strength and a 4 dexterity. I was uh, in my prime. You know. Have you like worked out or like done things to keep yourself up? Because I have. Yeah, I've heard that I have a big head. <laughs> Never skip head day. Oh, I've worked <laughs> on that one, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brooke. Yeah, what's up, Pip? I'm sorry for calling you old the first time I met you. <laughs> it's fine. I was wrong. I've... Yeah, you were. I mean, compared to you, I'm old, but... They're like five times older than you. They're like yeah. 40 times older than me. <laughs> we'll get they might there. be older than Granny. Do you Just not think... know how old she is? Well, she's pretty old. She looks like you. Like me? Yeah, like you're old. Not, I mean... <laughs> Does she have fuzzy ears? Uh, they get a little hairy sometimes, like little curlies. Oh, she is a furball guy, understand? <laughs> Anyone with vaguely hairy ears is immediately a furball. <laughs> Dogs. 
<laughs> I would explain. I mean, Pip can't speak to animals. He's we not outside yet? the realm of possibility. <laughs> are we there yet? Pip, you know the way. Professor, are we there yet? Uh, no. Can I turn this party around? Are we there, there yet? <clears throat> nope. How about now? Nope. <laughs> So, the path you're taking through the jungle is a little different from the one you took uh, previously. Uh, originally, you had followed the, um, the kind of hidden signs uh, of anyone having, having like come out of this particular door, which took you somewhat northwest-ish. Uh, but now you're trying to cut straight... Uh, um, to Narash, or at least to, to the, the particular cave you guys used to get to it. So you know that you have to head more south than you originally did. Um, so, <clears throat> any of, um, yeah, anyone present, so that includes, uh, that includes Devanya, um, although I can put away Maravesk. And Leshkri in this bag, we're not here. Uh, but any of you can choose to take the lead, and I'll be taking a survival check from whoever does. Sure, we know the way. I can do the first You know check. the direction. That's basically the way. <clears throat> <laughs> Before GPS. <laughs> <laughs> What is the way, but just a series of directions? <laughs> so do you want me to just roll a survival check? Yes, please. All right. 17. <clears throat> okay. Looks like... Uh... Alright, looks like your first uh, day of travel comes and uh, passes relatively uh, without any trouble. Um, you even managed to gather some of the fruits uh, that you had uh, originally seen uh, on the way. Uh, I believe you became acquainted with the Gronces? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's plenty on the way. Um, and so you, you can avoid uh, actually needing rations for today, but there's still the water situation, which I think Pontifex covers, or was that Alex's uh, job? The what? Make, oh, making the refilling water. the water thing, yeah. so we both could. Okay. Yeah, we both have that spell. <clears throat> uh, so as long as you're you're free, uh, you're willing to mark like one first level spell used to, like every day mm. uh, then we don't have to keep track of that uh, now my question is for the night you are in possession of the item that can conjure your tower um, do you want to use it or are you camping like old fashioned way I feel like well how about Roughly, how how far of a journey are we to to there from here? Are we like still a long ways off? Um, it should be roughly uh, a week. Oh uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, they live underground. Yeah, Pontifex will try to plant the seed and grow the tower. I think Pontifex has it, right? Uh, who would like to have it? I think someone. Picked it up and then Pontifex took it. <clears throat> I definitely didn't pick it up. Uh, Pip picked up the items. Stealing from a kid, huh? Yeah, of all the things that Pontifex would would take from a child, uh, <laughs> the memento of Talix and also a seed of Vakanoth would be it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he'll he'll grow the tower. No, a fish woman, you might want to stand back. Have a name? A fish grandma. Come on, Pontifex. I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. 
Professor, uh, what if I just called you Frogman all day? How would that make you feel? It would be physiologically inaccurate. Well. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was also a joke. <laughs> She's not laughing, Professor. Right, well, uh, abracadabra, funny. boom, tower. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, the perks of living in the woods. Opens the door, goes in the tower. <laughs> the great outdoors immediately goes indoors. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was just looking through my notes. Um, Virion, you yes. see Pontifex holding up uh, this uh, um, leaf that is encased uh, in uh, resin. Um, and he's working some magic on it uh, of, the, of the arcane variety. <clears throat> that takes about 10 minutes to actually get it uh, uh, done and set up. Uh, and he ends up like burying this leaf uh, into the ground. Um, and by the time he is done, you guys are still in this forest like area. Um, and the area directly ahead of Pontifex begins to shake a little bit. Uh, fallen leaves are blowing around by a sudden wind. Uh, and trees begin to bend towards the specific spot. And they contort and then they grow upward. Uh, until everything in, the, in this area has sort of, has sort of like come together. The dirt, the trees, the twigs, the leaves... Um, <clears throat> and a bunch of rocks to like build up the exterior of this uh, uh, multi-floor tower uh, that uh, from the outside definitely looks smaller than the one you were in this morning um, but it's still very much tower shaped and just feels like it's it, it, it's kind of melted into its own surroundings before, because of the things it's made out of but it's still like a distinctive enough uh, uh, building uh, everybody else doesn't mind it, like they've seen this before. Um, I, the Vamia has seen this too, so uh, really, it's only a surprise to you. Not the weirdest thing I've seen today. <clears throat> Fair. Uh, Pontifex, which rooms do you want there to be? Yeah, what were the, the options? Study for sure. Sauna for sure. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and is it three rooms? three rooms okay so study sauna and something else let me, let me give options. you the item while i bring up uh, well while i can only do one thing at a time but let me let me bring up the tower in the first place nope 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 it's here no that's the wrong tower <laughs> <laughs> oh no there's too many towers in this, it's in like this a, game there's a bedroom observatory there's the empty room that we can do whatever we want with okay. That's the wrong one. Wait, I don't know where I put it. Uh -oh. <laughs> lost Hold tower? on, it's somewhere. Yeah, it's lost Whoa. in my tower. Where did I put it? Is it here? Uh, wow, it's been a while since I brought it up. Hey, found it. That's actually a sensible place to put it. Okay, okay, so uh, Sana, yes. Study, yes. So these two. Uh, okay. Uh, you can have up to wait, no, three, I study. believe. Yeah, this is the observatory. Okay, so not the, uh, this, uh, this one, oh, this yeah, one, game, and uh, what is this? A kitchen? And uh, this that's is. Kitchen, yes. And this is the what? Over here? The game room. Oh. Entertainment. Room. Oh, so, I mean, um, you know, if if it is up to me, <laughs> uh, we don't need food. We need dragon chess. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, I think I that he intends food. to do the food one, but his subconscious kind of Professor, bleeds into no. the spell, and he <laughs> makes the chess room. <laughs> well, I'm hungry. Okay, I found. So I've given you the item, um, Vakanath's leaf in your inventory. <laughs> it requires attunement, so I've just gone ahead and. Attune it for you. 
uh, in order to actually be able to cast uh, um, the spell. Uh, the number of available rooms is based on the level of your highest available spell slot. Oh. So in your case, at this particular level, uh, it can be four rooms. Yeah. <gasps> okay, then then the kitchen. <laughs> I've already used yeah, so we said the kitchen, the sauna, uh, the observatory? No, uh, the oh, the study oh, and the game room. Aha. Uh -huh. No bedroom. Everybody sleeps on the floor today. Well, there's one bed in the bedroom, so... Just to uh, prevent any <laughs> arguing, uh, also dibs on the couch. <laughs> you don't want to soak all night in the bathroom? No, yeah, you're right. I am going to sleep in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll take dips on the couch. What about... <laughs> you have no respect for your elders, you know this? Yeah, her bones must be aching. Her what bunions. is her name, Professor? The old one. You know exactly who I'm talking about. What do you not know her name? <laughs> Lots of respect there, Professor. Who raised you? What is your granny's name? Uh, uh Nyla. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you just came up with this on the spot. I I feel like perhaps you don't know the name of old women. It's Nyla. That's massively disrespectful. You can have the couch. It's quite alright. I don't need to sleep anyway. No, it's what? Fine. You can... I don't know. I feel like you could use your beauty sleep. Holy shit. No, I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as long as you two sleep in different rooms. <laughs> I've had a gun used on me, and I'm still here, baby. <laughs> I just need a place I can sit down and get comfortable for a while. Four hours. Oops. That's a I'll be good. All right, I'm going to this spa. Um, Pip goes to the study, uh, and... He just sort of walks around and looks over some of the books. And at one point he reaches into his pouch and he pulls out uh, a horse-shaped nutcracker. And he just gives it a little pet and then he puts it on the shelf and says, I'm sorry I could never give this to you, Talix. Just leaves it there. Oh, He's now part of the tower. Forever. Permanently. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know uh, if you guys are spending the night uh, in the tower. Um, exactly where everybody is and whether you set up any, like, any watches or anything. Probably still should. So yeah, I and can it take... Wait, was it Pontifex that always wanted the first watch? Uh, Pontifex is in the spa. <laughs> Pip, right. will, Pip will use a bag of flour as a pillow in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> on one hand, it's sad, but on the other hand, it's kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's the whole character. That's such an, that's such an archy <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> He does it with expertise. He goes in the kitchen and says, Now, where is that flower pillow? <laughs> Sad and cute is the pillow. whole concept. <laughs> you know, it's going to blow your mind when you find out what flower is actually for. <laughs> you what? make it's bread food? with it? You mean what? it's a pillow and you eat it? <laughs> it's even Bites plushier when it's cooked. <laughs> <laughs> if we cooked it, I'd have like a bread pillow. <laughs> I'm not mm. taking watch. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a watch. I can take the first one if everyone is busy. That I can keep you company. I don't really sleep. I mean, I have to yeah. rest for a few hours, but at least a little alert during that time. Perfect. Where um, would we take that from? The watch. Are we staying outside? Probably not, right? Not watching. I mean, you know this tower better than I do. I mean, 
It's so good. How did we do it in the past? Did we just look out the windows? Uh, Is generally, that most... you guys didn't really like do it. We did. Is in how tower. we did it in the past. Yeah. Oh. I think at most, we just, someone was just on whatever the ground floor was. It just was there. All right, let's go to the ground floor. Okay, so uh, Brooke will take the first watch. Devami offers to take the second. Uh, Viren is technically awake for the entire night. Um, that's what we have, yeah? If Virion stays with me during my watch, eventually Brooke would start talking. Uh, you said you were in the war, right? I was. Do you mind talking about it a bit? I mean, it's a long time. Uh, a few hundred years of fighting. Oh, I meant if you're okay with talking about it. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's, uh, uh what do you want to know? I've, I myself have fought there, as you probably guess. I was part of a Limyar, so we were more or less at the front line the entire time. I'm just curious on the story of your gun properly. Like, what did you do that someone gave you a gun after the war? That means you must have done something great for them, right? I mean... I suppose, yeah. Um, they joined early on. I was a sailor before the war started. I mean, sailor, smuggler, getting supplies where they needed, uh, under the nose of people who would rather we didn't have them. And when the war broke out, we uh, took turn to um, securing supplies that didn't belong to us originally. Um, there was... One day our ship was um, out. We say we weren't really equipped for combat. We were small, fast, but without a lot of weapons. And we came across a uh, gnome settlement that was under attack. And we um, we inter intervened. Um, ship was lost in the process. Most of our crew. But I didn't forget. And you kept fighting afterwards? Of course. Or what? what else would Good. you do? Yeah. You're not wrong. Eventually took control of my own ship. Failed until war was done, and after that, but there's not much of use for old sailors now. Hmm. <laughs> Who taught you how to shoot the gun, then? I mean, the... Who I was gifted to, or the... The gnomes when they gave it to me, it was... I mean, they showed me the basics and just, uh... Practice? Practice, yeah, I mean... Didn't have much to do, I mean, it was... Most of my crew left after the war was over, they... Went on to do... Better things, settle down... Spend a lot of time alone on a old deck of a rotten ship. Plenty of time. It's funny you say that because a few weeks ago I've met an old friend from back in my time. And he mentions the same thing. Everyone who was so eager to fight and keeps their freedom from our side has now settled down. It's, it's obviously not like the war never happened, but no. it feels very normal. And I'm not gonna lie, it caught me a bit by surprise. Same. I mean, I understand for people who only knew knew the war itself, not the, before. I see how it would just be nice to be done with the fighting, but... It took hundreds of years to 
get all these scars. It's going to take more than 50 for them to heal. Hmm. I agree. I'd say I've tried to get away from it, but here I am now on a new continent, still doing the fighting. Same. I mean, I knew I never would never settle down anywhere. I've never been a put my roots down sort of person. Didn't so you just want to keep exploring? Yeah, I suppose. That's what I'd always planned on doing. I never really got to, used to calling one place home, so it feels natural. Well, for now, this is as good as it gets. Quite comfy. I mean, it's better than sleeping on the ground in the woods. You have to try out the sauna later. <laughs> I want to suggest it's amazing. It takes, like, all the sorrows and pain away. I'm sure it does. So do you just, like, leave these towers, like, just behind you as you go, or...? Um... No, we can make it appear and disappear. And funnily enough, even if we would like make it appear on like a tree. Windsor, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> but I think the one time we had like on some tree or rock afterwards, it was still normal. Back in shape. Mm -hmm. The land is not so, disturbed from summoning it. Yeah. It's, it's a guy who got... Dolan kidnapped. He got this as a gift from his father. And it's very handy. <laughs> it definitely is. Um, because I do miss seeing the stars of it, but... Well, you, you I'm pretty this? sure if you ask Pontifex nicely, or if I can ask for you, <laughs> there's... there's, there's there's a room we never had, I think. That it actually looks at the stars. So maybe for one of the other nights. We'll see. I mean, I don't want to intrude. I understand that uh, you're know, popping through a door, shuttled in by a devil, not a demon. It doesn't uh, bode well for trust, but maybe. I mean, neither does greeting someone with a blade to their face. No, but I understand. Would be on edge too. You carry it well. Well, you are fat already. Hmm. <laughs> That's the one thing I'm good at. <laughs> Using the sword and swinging it. I'm sure we'll get along well. Can you repeat that last thing? I'm sure we'll get along well. <laughs> Do you also fight with other weapons besides your gun? I'm assuming so, right? Before you got the gun? Yeah, and uh, she'll motion to the rapier on her hip. Oh, oh. of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the gun is nice, but uh, I trained with this for longer. And instead of a little short on ammunition, I have a... Uh, she'll pull out or bullet case and look at them and 27 all the shots I have until I find some gnomes hmm. I'm not sure how many of them you will oh you will probably maybe I haven't seen that many on the peninsula or uh, off the peninsula but if we come back how do they react when they see you with a weapon we came across one of their towns and one of their guns went missing and they nearly well, this is an exaggeration, but basically they nearly killed their entire city for that. <laughs> because I didn't know where it was going. Do you have to explain yourself a lot? Not often, I think most of them know. They all know you? Not, I mean, I give a name. And they, at least someone usually knows who I am. But they don't give these out easy, so... You also have, like, a literal document that, like, grants yeah. you permission to use a... Yeah, she's got to walk away through it, though. 
Okay, all right. Got that, got, got that 18 charisma, baby. All right. <laughs> hmm. That might come in handy. I try not to get on the bad sides, so don't make me regret it. But if you do need that little um, assistance dealing with them, I can usually pull a little weight. You know, before yesterday, usually the talking was up to Telix, but he isn't here anymore, and now it's left with me and Pontifex and Pip, and I think out of a three, Pip is like the most likable person. He doesn't talk much, so though. Yeah. He doesn't. But he'll grow up to you, or he'll warm up to you. But yeah, that could be... The, the, the um, devil talking thing. Uh, that's a long story. I don't know all of it, but I'm not sure yep. if it's mine to tell. So we have a long trip. Yeah, you can ask him. <laughs> Maybe he'll answer. Or the devil will. <laughs> oh, they're good people. Maybe you shouldn't let uh, Pontifex do too much talking. <laughs> That's inevitable. <laughs> I am inevitable. <laughs> He's too fast and witty to make him stop. He's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> and goes over his head. <laughs> if he sees something, he usually calls it out. Especially if it bothers him. But same goes for him. He's a good person. Uh, all right, I think my shift is almost up. Who do I wake up next again? Devamia? Uh, oh. Yeah, Devamia. Well, she probably has some interesting stories to tell you. Like, she is an explorer. She has been off the peninsula. So I enjoyed that. Thanks for the talk. Of course. Rest well. He nods and then goes over to wherever Devamia sleeps. Mm -hmm. Wakes her up. Checks if the couch is free. Ah, uh, I think Pontifex claimed it. God damn it! <laughs> no, 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 uh, Pontifex <laughs> is, is in the tub. He's asleep in the spa. All right. Spa. Well, actually, we don't need to move you, sorry, but I just wanted, like, a view. We could put him in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll have to pick them back up. I'm sorry, I'm actually clearing the map. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, soon. Yeah, Devamia basically sits next to Virion, looks at her briefly, and says, Hey. Oh. And then goes to just, like, <laughs> work on her bow, tightening his string. Stop, and then ignores you immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if she doesn't seem interested in talking, Virion's not going to push. Plus, she has to do the, you know, meditation thing for a few hours anyway. I'll take an insight to check from Virion. Oh. What even is that? It's... It's a special skill. That was almost a one, but it wasn't. Okay, 16. Um... From, from what little we've seen of her thus far, Devamia doesn't seem to be unfriendly uh, at all, but... Um, she also appears to be in a terrible mood. Um, she she's very very jittery. Just con she's doing a thing where she's con constantly shaking her leg while she's sitting down. Uh, and although she will make like a couple of attempts at small talk, it seems like she's forcing herself. Like she's trying to be nice, but she's really not feeling it. Virin will read the room and be like, "We don't need to talk. Balance is fine. I'm comfortable with it." Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Just gonna <clears throat> uh, focus on this. Gotta get my bow ready. You'll be fine. Um. Yeah. She'll just keep watch uh, on her own. Well, I I don't need. Sorry, quietly, not on her own. Although tonight I don't actually need perception checks. 
guess it's all good. Um. Oh boy. Okay, hold on. I need a moment to look at this up, Austin. <laughs> it doesn't have to be right now. You can wait <sighs> until like people are having a conversation again. Oh no! <laughs> people were just having a conversation. <laughs> okay, we can move on. It's not important right now. <laughs> Click! <laughs> I'm horrible. Look at that dumb. So. Uh, the rest of you will, will just notice that Pip is spending a lot of time in the kitchen whenever he's here. Oh, I'm putting uh, the music back. Oh, oh. <laughs> Continue! And uh, uh, if any of you were to check on him, you would find in the kitchen uh, that Pip and Squeak, uh, Squeak is in an apron, and uh, they're feverishly busy cooking things uh, with pots and pans. And you can see, like, actually some of the pots have legs and are moving on their own. Uh, as well as as uh, like bottles of spices that are moving back and forth between certain things, and like the knife is cutting things on its own. Um, and if you were to ask him what he's doing, he just says, "It's a secret." <laughs> <laughs> just oh, look imagining at him. Brooke on his look for a sleeping place, looking in. What the. Uh... Hearing, hearing that and then slowly backing out. <laughs> it's gonna be great. All right. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. While I bring you out of here. Uh, for the things you have requested, um, can please just go ahead and uh, make a... Have I been making a real survival for, survival for these? I think it's survival. Okay. I go ahead and roll survival check. Oh, it was almost a natural 20. <laughs> you know what? I've got a ton of inspiration. And I'm going to need to get rid of one today anyway. So I'm going to... You, your recap is coming one. up. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. I'm slightly better. A 12. Okay. 12. That? That? The answer is no. Oh. Not the ones you're looking for. Um, but you are able to find... I need a d4. Okay, it's been a uh, poor findings, but you pick up these two things. I hope that first one's a plant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so. A cat's tongue, they are, um, they are five-bladed purple-white flowers that quickly turn and ripen into fake-sized pods. Uh, there is a inside a pod. There is a fruit inside. Oh. The other one. Is this your first time finding it? No, he's found both of these before. Oh, okay. He adds them to his collection. He doesn't know. What to do with the cat's tongue yet, but he knows where to look uh, yeah. for recipes involving them. There's always a tressim around if you need extras. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
<laughs> so remind me, how long is this trip? Um, should be about a week. A week. Mm -hmm. About a week. Okay. Uh, you can always attempt to travel, like to push yourselves. Um, like you always have a fast, a normal, and slow traveling speed to pick from. Or Tekka. By the end of this, he's gonna think we've left him. I wish we could get a message to him. Poor Tekka. <laughs> He'll be fine. <laughs> As we're camping luxuriously. He's probably not drowning. No, he's currently campaigning for the mayor position. Or for <laughs> the new third mother. Down with the mothers. <laughs> let's let's elect fathers next. <laughs> uh cool. So oop. Uh, as promised, the following morning, when everybody's ready uh, and outside of the tower... Oh, by the way, you couldn't bring, like, any of your... Like, you couldn't bring the biggest mechanical animals uh, inside the tower. Uh, you could have brought, like, the crabs and the owl bear and the raven if you wanted to, but um, they could have also stayed outside, which, whichever you mm. prefer. I think one of the Pontifex made the tower who'd have explicitly said for them to stay outside because they might be objects and might not be able to leave. Okay, that's very fair. <laughs> that's, that's very true. <laughs> I see um. your trap. <laughs> uh -huh. It was a small army and then they get you. Oh, I guess they're trapped in the tower. I guess you gotta, <laughs> guess you gotta bait all of the enemies into the tower. <laughs> So we can all have a big barroom brawl inside of the chess room. <laughs> you. Oh dear. Uh, as promised, uh, Virium, when uh, when Pontifex is um is packing the the tower, um, everything in the environment that had been twisted to actually give it form it is released back the trees are turned back into their, their orig original form um, all the dust that has been displaced it goes back where, where it was and there's really no trace of anything having having happened here besides for your own footprints uh, all around I was going to make a leave only footprints joke but you know Actually, what happened? It is actually what happened. <clears throat> uh, Brooke taking the lead again? Can I again? Uh, you may. Uh, you don't. You don't have to. Sorry, I didn't mean to like impose it on you. Oh, I can, unless someone else. I never get on water, not through jungles. All right. I'm rolling. Okay. Uh, what? <clears throat> what is the pace you're trying to go for? Normal. Okay. Uh, let me bring this in. <clears throat> I also rolled a seven. Yeah, I see it. Okay. So, um... Soon, um, with you guys having taken this path uh, a little bit more southward than, than before, uh, it's on your second day of travel, kind of towards the, the second half of it, um, that you come across a changing scenery. Uh, it, it's not where you are yet, but you can see it off in the distance whenever the trees uh, uh, open up just enough for you to be able to see a bit further towards the horizon. Uh, for most of you, it's something you've already seen before. Um, ahead of you, there is a wall of dust. Um, it uh, it kind of looks like there there's stormy clouds up ahead. It looks like a wall of just gray clouds. Um, but it, it, it looks a little unusual. And the closer you get, the more... Um, you can see that the, the, the ground around you is beginning to be covered in dust. There's fewer and fewer trees around. Uh, and you're beginning to see the, uh, the telltale signs of uh, the fact that you're entering the area known as Dustfall. 
uh, where everything, including the animals and the plants, is made of rock and dust. Uh, Virant is bizarre. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody this is the else thing she's seen this week. Walking. Yeah. <laughs> everybody <laughs> else amazing. is just walking through this like uh, it's not that special. Um, I I even Devamia, which you guys know, she can be quite enthusiastic uh, about the geography of uh, of Lidaria. Uh, the fact that she has been apart from her partner for this long is clearly just wearing her down, and she has this constantly worried expression on her face. Um, Viren, it gets a little harder to breathe as you enter this new area. There's this constant low wind and dust is constantly being kicked up by your feet as you walk anywhere. Uh, it becomes kind of uncomfortable to march in a straight line and you guys just naturally spread apart a little bit. As you're walking, Virian like pulls like her scarf up over her face, and it's just like, "This is this is normal. This is what you you don't seem too bothered by this either." We have been through here. That's how we got to that other place. Huh. Uh, wait till you see what uh, is left in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> is it the not a dragon that you didn't defeat? Well, it is sea dragons that we didn't defeat. They're, they're very I think that we defeated it in, in a literal definition of the word. We didn't kill it, as it is hard to do, but uh, defeat? I would say so. If I understood that there was a very small dragon and you did not kill it. Well, it was already killed is the problem. <laughs> we didn't re-kill it. Either way, it was small, and you may or may not have actually beaten it. As small as a relative term. Small compared to other dragons, probably. Right, uh, small compared to my friend, yes. Small compared to me, once upon a time. Small compared to your ego. Sure. Anyways. Uh, yes, dragon. Mm -hmm. Is there something we got to be prepared for? Or go around it? Over it? Under it? Ideally, it hasn't broken or broken? Bro broken? Ideally, broke? it hasn't broke out of its uh, confinement. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we did then. seal it, sort of. You keep giving me all these qualifiers, and I'm not sure if they're good or not. Well, we don't know what they have done with the dragon. Right. If exactly. they have freed him. It's the last time the we left him. Is, as we left it, no problems. But uh, perhaps I didn't. I'm sure a week isn't nearly enough time to free a dragon. But definitely fine. The only other thing you might be aware of is Montebi. What were they? Were they sand creatures? I don't remember what they looked like. But there were other creatures than dragons in that cave. So if there are still some remaining, we killed all we saw. That is just something to look out for. <clears throat> But I'm going to assume that we have to be careful in general, since I would be very surprised if that place wasn't at least somewhat guarded, since it's one of the... Since it's the main entry. Noted. May I have a perception check from everybody? Of course. Yep. Uh, see if you could roll for the Bamiya as well, I would appreciate it. Can do. Oh. Ooh. 
Do you have advantage on perception checks? I do for my shield. Ah, that's Ooh, right. I love that shield. I remember that shield. Yeah. Good shield, good okay. shield. Mm -hmm. Good shield. <laughs> good shield. Good shield. What am I missing? Oh, Pontifex. Oh, sorry. I knew that. I was just, I just, you know, like to watch. <laughs> See everyone's rolls. Like, oh. <laughs> what everyone else is putting down first. Yeah, I, I just you know I see someone hit a twenty and I'm like, great, my work here is done. <laughs> I don't have to try too hard. Yeah, yeah. Else got it. Too much effort. Okay. Well then, that means uh, that Brooke. Uh, right around the time when you've entered Dustfall proper. Um, not right away, but a few hours of travel into uh, the completely dust-covered landscape, you're beginning to get this feeling it's in the back of your mind. Every once in a while, you turn around, you look behind the group, right to the left, up. It's weird. You couldn't... You just have this annoying, nagging feeling that you're being watched. <clears throat> I lower my voice and speak to the group. I don't know what it is, but I think we're being watched. I can't find him though, or her. Uh, last time someone said something like this, uh, we were hunted by a mechanical archer. I could send Squeak around to take a look. Yeah, perfect. Alright, up you go. Alright, alright. Spread <laughs> wings. And is just going to take a fly around in a circle to see if he can spot anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take a perception check from him too. Okay. Seven. <laughs> It's a particularly windy day in Dustfall. There's there's just so much dust in the air that Squeak can't really see too Beth. far. So Beth. he has to like fly low to the ground to even be able to see where he's going. And a couple of times he bumps into a, a petrified tree or a particularly larger rock jutting from the ground. Uh, at the end of his search, he hasn't seen anything unusual. There is a few animals around of the kind that live in Dustfall. Um, and yeah, no, nothing that feels out of place to him. He he uh, comes back, lands on Pip's shoulder. His armor is just covered in dust and he's wiping his eyes. Ugh, next upgrade for this better be goggles. <laughs> <laughs> goggles. I didn't see crap. Hmm. Yeah, I'm could be wrong. I could be wrong, but it just felt that way. So just keep aware. It's usually good to trust your instincts on things like that. Stay on guard, maybe slow the pace a little bit just to keep an eye out. Okay. I guess we're slowing down at least for the day then. Okay. Despite the feeling, seemingly it just follows you. Brooke, every once in a while you could have sworn you just saw something moving out of the corner of your eye, but every time you turn around, nothing. It's beginning to just drive you mad. You can swear there's always something behind you. Uh, no, ahead of you. No. Uh, the only time when that feeling kind of subsides is by the time in the evening you step back into the tower. And uh, perhaps after a, a short break into the sauna, you have forgotten all about it. It's, um, it's no, no longer bothering you. Hmm. So that's what the sauna does to someone. <laughs> <sighs> and the following morning, on your third day of travel, as soon as you step out of the tower, feeling is back. It's just digging in the back of your mind. Still only for me? Yeah. Um, 
Um, I'll take your third survival check. Mm-hmm. Hey, yo! Oh, then. We're about to be even again. <laughs> okay. Um. So on this particular day, uh, with this feeling following you everywhere you go, Brooke, you just you decide to speed up a little bit. Perhaps you can lose it. You know, whatever is perhaps following you, or just this like. Uh, maybe it's just your own paranoia, but maybe picking up speed will help with, like, uh, just leaving that feeling behind. Uh, you make twice as much progress uh, today. You don't come, anything, come across anything dangerous. Uh, so thus far, it's been three days, and I'm just... Make sure you have the rations for this, because uh, every day will cost one. Ooh. Yep. Uh, while you're good on water. So it's been three thus far. And we can either total them up at the end, or you can remove them day by day. Just remember to use them up. All right. Could we have used some of that fruit from the first day in, in place of a ration? Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, actually, yes. So you don't have to spend the two thus far. So after that third day, uh, Varian's out of food. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only had two days rations on me. Oh, we well. can't hunt any of these animals. So we'll just have to find some more fruit in this horrible, desolated landscape. <laughs> and strong teas. <laughs> <laughs> Varian. The animals you have been seeing thus in dust fall thus far. Uh, besides being often like these these uh oh, I don't know about it. Um sometimes they are creatures that you're kinda sort of familiar with, things that would exist in Plurna too. Um, but every monster seems to have adapted to this incredibly dry and dusty landscape. Uh, you come across a tortoise whose shell is entirely made of stone. Uh, and Pip seems to be pretty excited about the fact that is there's the an actual one? animal in it. Has it traveled this far uh, in this amount of time? <laughs> 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 you want to know if it's the same one? Yes. Roll an animal handling check. <laughs> hey, do you know me? It's Did me, we talk it's before? me! <laughs> Nine. It's the same one. You're convinced <gasps> of it. He oh. seems to have moved backwards. Buddy, you're going the it's wrong so way. Tender. I did not expect to find you <laughs> if it went backwards. He did not expect the loop. <laughs> uh, click, click. So about the Russians situation. Yeah. Uh, oh, sure. Like, where I was going with the description of the animals was that a lot of them look unedible uh, because of those properties. Some have like physical parts of them that seem to be made of stone, uh, and it, it looks like they're quite difficult to, to crack open because of it. Um, you haven't come across a single source of water ever since you've, you've entered this hellish landscape. Um, some members of this party seem pretty excited by uh, by seeing these creatures, but like all you can think of is the fact that it doesn't look like you can eat them. Does the kitchen have anything for food? Uh, the kitchen does. Might as it has as it has the bag of flour um I'll let you use my pillow if it means you can eat <laughs> uh what you guys were unsure of was how food would actually work since like items in the tower can't be taken out of the tower but you haven't really tested what eating would do and if you want Viren to be the test subject. <laughs> 
Ja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vad du det tänkst? Det är för för real. <laughs> So the party gonna be like, hey, you can use this Why kitchen, and then they all, kitchen? they all like stand directly outside of it to look at Veer and eat. <laughs> Watch. Yeah, like <laughs> everyone checking on her if she's okay. I mean, why else would there food be in there if you can't? Yeah. Eat it, right? You just don't totally load in on yourself afterwards. <laughs> You're all just <clears throat> <laughs> trying to talk yourself into fine. doing this. <laughs> at worst, we dodged a bullet. Most of us. <laughs> Maybe that's a loophole. Is like you can take stuff out of the tower. You just have to eat it first. <laughs> <laughs> Smuggle it. Yeah. <laughs> Want to read that the book tower. later? Shove it all the way down your mouth. Think <laughs> <laughs> about your world. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't don't eat. <laughs> Sorry. Don't eat, don't eat the books. Don't shove them in any hole. <clears throat> it's not meant to be a loophole. Uh, Virion, that that evening, uh, you are offered you're you're given permission to use the tower's kitchen. Um, but everybody else, like, abstains from eating. They're just letting you do any cooking and eating. Uh, and for some reason, some of them... Well, there's all sorts of different reactions uh, to use in the kitchen, but they seem curious about it. Nobody really knows where anything is in the kitchen. Doesn't look like any anyone has been using it before. First thing, she's gonna, like, take a sniff test to make sure nothing's expired. <laughs> Uh, what check would that be? What what check would that be? Uh, uh hmm. What's if cooking I, related to? I mean, if it's like it is in real life, and whoever produced that stuff put like the expiry date on the packaging. Perception. It, there is no expiration date on any of this. No. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> but good How about try. This? How about since Virian would have experience with this being on a ship for several hundred years, can we just add my proficiency bonus without any other modifiers? Ah, uh, your your what bonus? Proficiency. No other modifiers. Um. Okay. Uh. For, make it for make it intelligence. Okay. Uh, plus That's worse. That's fine. Plus efficiency. Mm. And this is just gonna be like all the cooking. So you 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 sniff everything. You check the flour. You wash the the, the rice. Uh, all the food here seems fine. It seems fresh. Uh, and then you get to cooking. You just make a meal for yourself. Um, you use what you find. and hey, You can have that half of the kitchen. <laughs> Pip sleeps <laughs> in the other half. And I'm cooking in that other half of that half. <laughs> so in one of the quarters. I've been in the gallery before, it's not delicious, even with half the kitchen. <laughs> Um, and uh, Virin, you are, uh, you, although you can't make like, oh, actually, no, 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 that's true. Uh, a lot of things that you find here are specifically spices and foods that are uh, common of elven cuisine. Uh, so you find one familiar thing on this journey. Uh, oh, good. And you can actually make like an authentic, like elven dish, something that you would have uh, easily known how to make, and you would have actually enjoyed eating. Uh, and you are fine when you eat it. Don't worry about me specifying it's that. Fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. 
<laughs> Finally, some good fucking food. <laughs> you can never leave the tower again. <laughs> I think wish everyone would stop staring at me like that. Did I turn green or? You digest the food, and then the food becomes part of your cells. So if you leave the tower, you also disappear. <laughs> Adventures. <clears throat> I have actually okay. created just a, some kind of horrible <laughs> cosmic horror with this tower. Oh, you can't have this nice thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um. yep. well, fine. Everything's fine. And you leave the following morning. Is Brooke still taking the lead? Unless someone else takes over. I will do it. Before. <laughs> All right, Pip. I know Who the stone. I know these stones well. I'm assuming no, zero no, problems with leaving the tower. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, in the sense that you step out of it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, step, you step out of the tower, it's all fine. The tower is folded up, you feel fine. That was one fine too many. Brooke. Oh. That feeling. Feeling is still with you. All right, whatever this is, I still feel like we're being watched. Does no one else feel that? Do we have nothing for that? I mean, I can mm. I take, a, take a look around myself to see if I can spot something. I'm just going to look around happen. with the gem of seeing. How do we control, by the way, those mechanical animals that are with us? Uh, they have been following your, your vocal instructions thus far. Like, you tell them, sit over there, and they, they go sit over there. Wait, is it the same feeling as when we were first watched by these mechanical things? Is Orm like, watching us again? Uh, the the one who stares. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Brooke, you're pretty sure that this doesn't come from uh, the machines what? that are with you. Um. Like you, 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 you test it, right? You know that there's mm -hmm. uh, a chance that Tinart might be keeping an eye on you through the mechanical ravens. So, like, um, th there is there is a brief moment of time where you think that maybe that's where it's coming from. Um, but yeah, you test it. You like go around where uh, where you know that they will not be able to see you, and like you know that when you enter the tower, the feeling goes away. Um, and and since the machines stay out, then that could have been it. But when you try to test it, no, it's not the machines. Does the gem of seeing reveal anything? How far does it see? Oh, uh, good question. La, da, 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 da. I am scrolling down. I'm still scrolling down. Uh, 120 feet. Okay. Um, why can't I find it in your inventory? Did I never give you the item? You did, but what it says it does doesn't seem to actually be what it does. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. I should make it like, I should make unique text for it. That's right. Uh, I was just trying to decide, like, how this would see through the dust. Um, and I don't think you would, like, see through it. Um, this is, doesn't let you see through items. Uh, so, your vision with it is a lot more limited than it normally would be. Uh, but, like, looking around, you kind of take a look at Virion, and you don't see anything unusual going on there. Uh, and you look at your companions, and then you look around, and besides the fact that uh, you catch glimpses of uh, um, 
of a landscape that looks a little different and seems to have more life, um, more more greenery, more various colors actually, not just green. Uh, it feels like the the jungle has continued in some way or another uh, through this landscape. At least when you look through uh, through your gem. Um, but you don't spot any additional creatures or any, anything or anyone that might be looking at you. Okay. Pip just uh, uh, is peering through the disc and then he he brings it back down, puts it back in his pouch and just shrugs. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. Pip, you take the lead. You're you you you're pretty sure that you know which way you're going. Probably. I mean, you just continue in the same direction where Brooke was taking you yesterday, and you figure that that's gonna be fine. Pip gets distracted um, frequently. Oh, he gets <laughs> yeah yeah. Pip gets distracted frequently, and every once in a while, somebody has to be like, "All right, time time to go, Pip," and he's like picking up things, uh, establishing the values of new stones that he finds. Um, and everybody roll up another perception check, please. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Brooke, you being very tense, uh, and just paying attention to every little noise, uh, every little movement, uh, Viren, you're just you're just trying really hard to be careful. There's a lot of really weird shit going on in this area, and it's hard to see through the dust. Uh, so you're trying to be cautious and look out for um, anything that uh, uh, your current leader Pip uh, seems to be too distracted to pay attention to. Is that a natural like this one? Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I found a new it's rock. Funny. <laughs> Puts it in his pouch. <laughs> um. And yeah, Brooke and uh, uh, Virin are the first ones to hear it. Uh, it is far away, repetitive sound. It actually sounds kind of familiar. Um, this is barking, as in from a dog. And the, when you pick up on the sound and you start like trying to just focus on it, uh, you take a couple of steps in the direction where it's coming from, and uh, this dog is barking in a way that uh, uh, seems to very um, obviously indicate distress. You hear the barking and you hear whining. It's armed. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did, you, yeah. did you forget there's a book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Long story, Jory. Yeah. Too much. Too much. It's a long trip. My lungs. <laughs> We've got a dog book, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> How is it coming closer to us, or is it just staying um, there? No, it's not coming any closer. All right. Do Question. I understand it? Oh, um, Pip, you do, yes. Ah, uh, you do. Uh, understand it, and uh, to you, the barking is a call for help. Uh, Pip just starts sprinting in that direction. <laughs> your, your fearless leader uh, is suddenly starting to run a different way. Wait, you don't uh, you don't hear it? Hold on, you're rolling at one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Pip? <laughs> <laughs> but after mm, it gets what? pointed out to you, <laughs> then it sounds huh? like a call for help. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We gotta go! Not again. Be careful, Pit, please. He's in trouble, he needs help! <laughs> he rolls his eyes and then runs after him. Uh, okay, cool. 
if everybody is, is going, um, yep. then uh, quickly within within view as you push uh, forward, uh, taking a slightly different uh, direction from where you were going before, uh, the, the landscape all is beginning to look the same. Uh, but further up ahead, you do see something that looks like the, the some old ruins. Like there used to be a building here, um, but for the most part it's as it has crumbled away and there's just a very um uh the lowest part of its walls are still standing uh there's a few trees here that uh, uh have lost all of their branches and there's really just the, the 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 logs left behind and they too are made of stone um and besides for for these uh, uh, petrified the trees, the air is for the most part clear, and through the the uh, dusty wind, uh, you hear it it's barking. Uh, you rush towards it, and it, it gets louder, it gets closer. Pip, you're you're sure that this is a dog calling for help. Um, and before the dog, you see the uh, the lizards, uh, these. Uh, uh, very, very large, uh, very much overgrown uh, lizards that are circling the source of the barking. Uh, most of you, besides Severin, have seen lizards like these before uh, in a certain cave. Uh, these are drippers. Drippers. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Assuming I don't click past it. Oh, no. Uh, back, back, back. Back. Okay. Ooh. Uh, place your minis in this area. Good. Turn on. Oh, Devamia's token needs to have her uh, hit points adjusted. <laughs> she doesn't have a thousand? Does not no, have a thousand. <laughs> That's why she's so strong. <laughs> it all makes sense now. <laughs> uh, feel free to mess with her mini all you want if you want to put AC on her or anything. Hmm. Uh, and in the meanwhile, I will call for initiative. Jory, your mini is so cool. Yeah. It's really cool. I keep zooming in on it. I'm very happy with it. It's so cool. Come on, Pip. <laughs> <laughs> Rough day, buddy. Bad Rough rolls day. for, for Pippy today. It is sad to these to not roll. Initiative. <laughs> uh, yeah, they should not be all on the on a thirteen. That doesn't look right. Oh, I have to set mine, huh? Did that like just happen? Because everything is right here. Did they all roll a 13? There's no way. <laughs> Imagine it. I guess so. What? No. Actually? That's a DM's dream. <laughs> <laughs> that, that surely cannot be right. Accept it. Love it. Okay, yeah. Well, I guess, I guess we're going with it. <laughs> Um, okay, neat. Do we have everybody? Uh, Devamia, Brooke, Pip, Pontifex. Oh, Viren. Viren is yellow. Viren is not supposed to be yellow. I mean, Viren is supposed to be. Ah, Viren is supposed to be pink, not white. I know words. 
Uh, if I do this and then do that, I think that's how we do it. Pink. Not not pink. Um, e. cyan. Fuck. <laughs> I said like, like 50 deal. different <laughs> colors and none of them were the correct ones. There we go. Alright, now. Okay, Joy. Yes. Um, oh, you changed. Okay, I, one dripper is a nine. <laughs> I should let you know that the Vamia's initiative is not correct. Uh, probably because I've set her to roll it instead of. Uh, Ah, uh, setting yeah. it because she was an NPC. So Got now it. she's supposed to be 21. She's meant to be five. Oh, oh. Okay, so now we should be correct. Yeah, Neat. thank you. Uh, are we set? I think we're set. Neat. That means that. Oop. Uh, we can start with Brooke's turn. Oh, no, we can't. I'm missing my whiteboard. One second. Ha! Ah, got my whiteboard! Hey, Brooke! Um, up ahead, you see what I have described. Um, so, what would you like to do? Dennis? Oh, I'm muted, okay. <laughs> Pip said we're saving that dog, huh? Since he's our leader. <laughs> How much can I walk? <laughs> I will dash. I'll allow it. Uh. And then from here, just make loud noise, go like, whoa, 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 whoa! Try to scare them <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> With my sword out, obviously. That's my turn. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. It's bark, like that. Bark, bark. It, That's what you do when a bunch of animals are fighting. <laughs> it's just, oh, hey, hey. Hey, hey, stop it. Stop that. <laughs> Can I take an intimidation check like from, <laughs> from Brooke, please? Of course. That's my best charisma. Eleven. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Do they run away in fear? No. <laughs> but I thought so. <laughs> two of them turn their heads. Uh, oh. Brooke, now that you're all the way over here, uh, you can actually see the barking creature. And it does kind of look like a dog, uh, hmm. but it looks like the, the dog has no fur that you can actually see. Uh, instead, it, it, it looks like it rolled in, in like mud and then it rolled through a bunch of gravel. And like all these pebbles are just sticking uh, on it. Uh, so it just looks like a dog entirely covered in gravel. Uh, huh. And uh, uh, yeah, it it's barking and barking, and you arrive and you like wave your arms and shout, and a couple of these uh, overgrown lizards are now looking your way, uh, and we move, move me, <laughs> we move on <laughs> to Barry. <laughs> All right. It's <laughs> 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 hard. I understand. So, we're saving this dog. <laughs> dog Are you time. joining in on the joint in the shouting? Uh, I mean, we're going to go up here. We're going to bonus action dash. Because <laughs> I'm rogue. And is I'm assuming there's like rocks or gravel or something on mm -hmm. the ground. Yeah. Uh, I think very also on the dog. On the dog. But specifically, <laughs> Virian's gonna try to find like a decently sized rock and pocket it. Strip or two here. You're going to pocket the throw rock? Throw a rock at it. You're gonna throw a rock at it. Okay. Uh, I'd improvise weapon. Dripper to the closest one here. 
Number two? Yep. Okay. Uh, Did you want rank? Uh, improvised uh, yeah, ranged uh, weapon. Um, I, I think it's just a ranged attack. Okay. We're gonna make Proficiency it a d4 or... for damage. Uh, do you have proficiency, proficiency with uh, improvised weapons? No, I do not. Cool. Ah. Uh, I don't use improvised weapons very it's often. It's not so. quite like throwing a dagger or something similar. So probably no proficiency. That's fine. Probably fine. Ah, uh, but a 14 hits. Alright, so d4 for damage. Mm-hmm. Plus strength for now, just 34. Or dex. Uh, always. Yeah, okay. I think you always had it. Always strength. Yeah. Oh. Dex, because it was a dex attack. Oh, uh, yeah, dex. <clears throat> okay. Bonk. Um, the, the, the rock thrown at this really large uh, creature makes it sound like it landed on another rock. Um... Like, it hits something really sturdy. Uh, and, uh, like, you, you, you have to actually squint to see if it did anything. You almost, from the sound of it, you almost thought that you missed it. Uh, but no, you, you hit it, like, square in the back of its head. And uh, uh, this giant lizard is also turning back to check what, what's going on. Uh, I turn. Okay. Squeak. All right, Shit. let's put this to good use. He spreads his wings, and the mechanical armor uh, adjusts as he flaps and flies. Uh, he's going to be about 10 feet in the air right here. Mm -hmm. And is going to cast Magic Missile. <laughs> One on each of, the, uh, of these furthest drippers. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll the damage, separately right. for each of them. First one is four. Second one is five. Third one is two. <laughs> okay. Um, the mechanism through which these... Uh, uh, tiny little missiles are shot. It, uh, uh, it's very different from how your gun works, uh, and you can tell there there is no um, uh, it, there is no gunpowder being used uh, in it whatsoever. Uh, it, but there is still like this loud bang that does sound somewhat familiar, uh, and a bunch of tiny, tiny, tiny like toothpick sized. Uh, uh, missiles shoot out of uh, Squeak's uh, new suit, and each of them uh, seems to like have a way of aiming themselves uh, straight towards the target. Squeak basically shot straight into the air, and then they adjusted the trajectory uh, to go towards each of these lizards. And pew pew pew, um, each one ends up uh, digging through the the scales of the creatures and leaving behind a small hole. I am the most powerful being on this planet. Me. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> okay. Um, is that a, is that it from uh, from Squeak? Yeah. Okay. Let's see how much movement these things have. Uh, this much. So these three have had their attention turned towards the group. So we're going in order. 25. 30. Hey. Hello. Hello. Um, this, uh, this giant lizard is uh, very, very close to the color of dust-covered ground here. Uh, maybe in different circumstances it would have been difficult to spot, but uh, right now this uh, very large creature is definitely coming towards you uh, and you ready yourself 
uh, for its bite. Virion, uh, it is a 21 to hit you. That does hit. <clears throat> the damage is uh, uh, 11 piercing damage. Uh, and you are grappled by it. Hmm. Uh, it bites down on one of your legs, it bites on your boot, and just holds you down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's gonna try to claw you. And it is a 13 to hit. That misses. It's, it's doing the thing, like, it's trying to lie down and start kicking at you. Uh, like, kind of like cats do when they grab your arm. Uh, but you're, you're not letting it pull you down with it. Uh, let's see. Number two. Can number two squeeze in here? 30. Yes. Is a, a nine to bite Virion. Nine to bite? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, and a ten to claw. Uh, number three is more concerned with the dog, and it's gonna go nom nom. No! <clears throat> it looks like the dog's uh, stone-like uh, exterior is doing a good job of keeping the dripper's teeth at bay, uh, and the sound of the dripper's teeth biting into... Uh, into the the this, uh, this stone uh, fur, uh, it, it's very loud. It's like chalk on a blackboard, um, and the the dog whines in fear. But it doesn't look like the bite or the claw has actually drawn any any blood from it. Uh, the dog is scared and is taking the dodge action. Da, 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 da. Uh, it can't reach. It's just gonna come here. Me? Okay, Pip. Okay, uh, Pip is going to come up, see that the poor little gravel dog is in danger still and uh, I think Pip thinks it's time to bring in some reinforcements <gasps> so Pip is going to hold up his white cloth doll and uh, start encanting a few uh, words in infernal and these strings start to come off of the doll uh, and they seem to be just endless, just they keep coming out of the doll. And where they they end up streaming to, they coil up into like these little string white cocoons. And when they open up, uh, something else emerges. And so Pip is casting Conjure Woodland Beings. And what challenge uh, rating would you like? One half. One half? Yes. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you sorry <laughs> for me? No, I kicked off Quake from his... Oh! <laughs> from his perch. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, I'm sorry for you. That <laughs> means that uh, um, in those spots on the ground, uh, you have successfully conjured four... Wool dogs into existence. Yes. Oh, um, the boys. Would you like to roll a d8? I I would like to roll a d8. Uh, unfortunately, they need to get out like a normal dog. Uh, <laughs> Two. Token. Because uh, one day I will like commission like a custom wool dog. Uh, I have a Blink dog model. I'm pretty sure that. there's a Wooloo model. 
somewhere that you could use. <laughs> that would be so good. I like I like that you brought wool dogs in to help the gravel dog. It's very cute. <laughs> oh, it's tiny. So from the from the white cocoons, once the string sort of dissipates, emerge four wool dogs. Um. <laughs> Virun, just as ahead there is a dog that appears to have uh, um, gravel instead of, uh, of fur, uh, now you are surrounded by a bunch of dogs that uh, they do have fur, but also their torso is completely covered in wool, uh, just like sheep at these spots. <laughs> you know, things just aren't surprising anymore. It's been a day. <laughs> oh God, like whatever. I'm going. <laughs> I'm to done. Be, so I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, choose category. Summoned. All right. I'm going to add a stat block for uh, the Unin to your uh, to Pip's extras tab. Thank you. Um, okay. What did he roll? Uh, a two? A two. Okay, let's see uh, what does Unin look like. Okay, you have successfully summoned four fast Unin. Fast Unin. Each of them have an extra ten feet of movement. Of a nice. base movement. Well, they are speedy. <clears throat> And now the barking has increased uh, <laughs> <laughs> four times. Bark, 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 bark. Um, Pip, specifically, this barking from the dogs you have just summoned, uh, they actually don't translate to anything to your ears. That's, that's you hear so strange. The barking. <laughs> Uh, do I uh, roll initiative for them? I think yes, that you go on your turn. Oh, really? It says I roll initiative for them as a group. And they have their own turns. Okay, I'm going to make a copy over here and I'm going to give it stats. <clears throat> uh, player controlled. And you can... This is now... Hmm? Since there's now a bunch of things, uh, everyone within 20 feet of Virion gets a plus four for the weapon attack damage. But oh my everyone. god! Yeah. Whoa. Only weapon attacks. So sorry, spellcasters. But so, but fights, dog attacks are that. So nice. Well, gonna have to wait a while for them. <laughs> so I rolled a nine. No, no. Okay, so you can put the you can put the initiative on this token, uh, and you're also going to keep this in the future for any okay. <clears throat> additional like conjure woodland uses. Done. Uh, I need you to keep it on the table for the initiative oh. to show, oh. show up. That's why I'm putting it in the corner. <laughs> Oh, Just sorry. Toss it here. Uh, let's see if uh, it works. Uh, what? No, because I probably told it to. Oh. To roll that initiative. There we go. Okay, anything else on Pip's turn? That's it. That brings us to the Vanya. All right, Devamia steps up to the plate, runs up a little bit, and then going to do some shooty shoots. Shooty uh, shoots. Yeah. Uh, at this dripper two, probably going to try to aim for where like the joints connect, where it's not as petrified. Maybe who knows? We'll just see how it goes. You know. Mhm. Mm mhm. And uh, let's roll for that. You guys will be happy that with the upgrade from NPC to PC, the Vamir has gotten a tiny bit stronger. <laughs> 27 hits. Alrighty. Uh, 
And with that, uh, the vomit can mark the target as a favored enemy, increasing damage, which is fascinating. And then let's roll some damage. That's 14 damage. Damn. Which one? Number Damn. two? Uh, number two, yeah. And then it's the second attack, because the Vami can do that sort of thing. <laughs> Just instantly, uh, yeah, get another arrow, I guess, <laughs> magically. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's go again. 24 hits. All right. And <laughs> some more hurdies. And that's 13 and then there's some other fancy stuff there's a horde breaker ability which lets the vami make another attack against a different creature that is within five feet of the original target so let's do it again uh for dripper one okay just takes out arrow after arrow uh she, uh, there, there's been a few nights that she has spent next to Viria not talking, just constantly messing with her bow. Uh, and that seems to have paid off 21 hits. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> not as effective, but it's still a little thing. Okay, that's on number one. <clears throat> uh, Devamia running after you guys, being a little bit slower than the rest of you. Uh, at least she... Uh, makes herself useful from a distance as she says, Ah, uh, don't worry, guys, we've got this. Pew, pew, pew. <clears throat> Vera and you, uh, you hear these uh, these arrows just uh, cutting through the air to uh, directly to your right, and you hear uh, you see each of them actually landing on uh, on their on their targets and just remaining stuck inside of the dripper's bodies. Is that everything from the Vami? Dies all. Hey, on the facts, what would you like to do? Uh, is your trust him with doing... you? Uh, no, uh, she is not. Uh, not with him at the moment. Meh. Yeah, she's probably fine. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to toll the dead on Dripper 4. So I'm going to move just so I can see better. That's probably good. And then I'm going to tell the dead drip before. Uh, DC 16 wisdom save. Wisdom save 10. Uh, nice. Uh, and drip before is injured already, right? Yes. This much. Oh, I thought I double one. I did double one and then it rolled over. <laughs> Eight damage. Okay. This is uh, this is necrotic? Uh yeah, yeah. Okay. Um Oh, we haven't used this gimmick in a in a minute. Where is it? Oh, I don't have it anymore. The bleeding. Oh yes I do. Uh, whenever he uses his toll of the dead, it's less a bell tolling and more of a bleeding of a goat. <laughs> yeah. There it is. As it ages something <laughs> rapidly. Uh, and that is it. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, can I have a religion check? Sure. Oh, it was on a nat 20 and then it rolled over. Gah! <laughs> the dice are being very mischievous today. Yeah, they're bouncy today. Okay. A Pontifex, uh, as you cast your spell, you get this, like, feeling. It's very faint, but, like, something is a little different. But not necessarily in a bad or in a good way. You just feel like when you when you actually go um, to, to cast your magic in this situation of... Uh, of danger, uh, that something about it is ever so slightly different. 
Okay, uh, like it changes a one into a seven. Great. Good change. <laughs> uh, the spell takes effect. Uh, the Vami is shooting arrows, but like you don't you don't need a weapon to harm creatures from a distance. You just rely <laughs> the on your magic. God and anime on my side. <laughs> <laughs> And as you speak, this dripper is hurt. <laughs> Anything else in your turn? Uh, no, no, that's it. Hey, Brooke, we're back to you. There's a <clears throat> bunch of dogs around all of a sudden. <laughs> this usual. one seemed braver. <laughs> Alright, I'll take my sword and hit dripper four twice. <laughs> they all I'll look try very to friendly. At least. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go go for it. We do have so much text on your 14. desk. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen hits. Someone wrote a lol but didn't sign and made it white. That's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. 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 What? Hold on, what's a 14? To hit? And the 19 is damage? No, I thought it didn't hit, sorry. You have, you oh, have no, flanking. 14 does hit. That does hit, and also you, you have flanking, that's right. Oh my god, oh, you have so okay, much flanking. Okay, then it's a 27 to hit. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> sorry. You get an extra plus 40 your damage for standing next to Virion. An, an extra plus the 4? Plus 4. Oh, instead of 12, yes, 16. 16, 16, 16 then. Okay, wow. uh, Viren, how does this manifest? Like, is this, are you actively doing something? Yeah, it's it's uh, her commanding presence, so it's just, uh, like, as the battle is unfolding, she is, like, basically shouting commands, like, calling out, like, you know, now it's that there's this weak spot is there, and it's, you know, basically shouting out, like, when things are, like, vulnerable. Nice. We'll follow the lead. Brooke, this this feels like old times. Yeah, I'm a good little uh, soldier boy. And, <laughs> People uh, telling you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds All right, of your the parents. second attack is a 26. 26 then. hits. And 1DA plus sets of 4 come automatically? Yeah, it's just as long as you're within 20 feet of Virion. Hey, yo. <laughs> Is it only weapon attacks? Only weapon attacks. Okay. All right, another 16 it's, damage. So it's uh, Oh, you already added a plus four. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. I was, I was That's why 20? it was a juicy plus 11. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's only weapon attacks, and I don't get it. It's just my allies. Oh. The ultimate support. Yeah, plan support, baby. Are you a warlord? I am, I am a warlord, yeah. Oh, what is a warlord? Rogue so cool. warlord. Well, warlord. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Multiclassed. Oh, yeah. I don't know warlord well enough to know which one, but I was like, that's a warlord ability. It's a like a port someone did from the 4E one. It was by Baduga yeah. on GM Binder. Yeah, it's a really, cool. really popular. Uh, yeah. Like, a lot of people that, you know, don't allow homebrew, some of them will still allow warlord because it's so... It's so much ingrained. fun. Uh, it was uh, Kibble's Tasty who did it, I thought. It's a, that's a different one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this one's much more support, less attacking. Got it. Um, so yeah, uh, Brook, you find that uh, Virion's uh, um, yeah. uh, ability to lead uh, your, your attacks is actually quite effective. Um, anything else in your turn? Mm, that's it for now. Hey, speaking of Viren, who is currently grappled, yes. uh, All right. it's currently being bitten. I am She'll going to use fine. simultaneously the best and worst use of this ability, and as she's being chomped down on this lizard, you just see her and like this like wave of shadow just kind of engulfs where she was standing, and she is going to use her Blessing of the Raven Queen and go five feet that way. But We need to rename that ability. Yeah, we do, but... <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I meant to do that, but yes. But yeah, she uses her thing, she bamps. And you see she is, like, 
has this um like shadowy like shroud over her as she does it. And and most importantly, it does break the grapple with only using my bonus action. And then she is going to uh, try to rapier to for four here. Flanking with Wooldog or no? Uh, yes. Technically, yeah. yes. It wouldn't be. No, it would be. What? You, just have to be able, you have to be able to draw a line through opposite sides of their token. Yeah. Which would be this. Yeah, as long as opposite sides. No, opposite, like, entire faces, as long as it cuts all the way through the token. Right, so, like, this face and this face is cut by a straight line, so it yep. is uh, it is flanking. Yep. I believe this would... I think the up. only ones that have to go, like, straight through, straight through, are the diagonals. Yep. Um, okay. All right, you using a different character sheet than you usually do. Hmm? Oh, there it is. I was looking for my attack bonus for my oh. weapon. Because, uh, yeah. 23? Oh, wow. Did I just save you from a net one? Nice. 23 it did. hits. And. Mm. Going to be, uh. Full damage. Okay, what are you attacking with? Rapier. So D8 and then sneak attack. Ah. And then, yeah. Alright, Stabby. This is number four. Twelve damage. Um, this... This dripper is having a terrible time. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is nearly dead. Well done. That will be my turn. Squeak. Yay. Squeak will... Mm. Take a break. He's done. He did his yeah, part. He's gonna come <laughs> land on this rock. He's <laughs> gonna come chill. <laughs> Anything else? Mm. But he will hold the dash action. That's okay. It. To trigger one. To trigger on Pip's turn. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's just bite everything that is within reach. <laughs> so, um, here, let me let me also. <laughs> You'll have to keep track of the hit points of the dogs. Oh no. I hope okay. you have paper. I do. <laughs> okay. Um, let's begin by ah, by dropping my dice and uh, biting uh, wool dog number one, which is a twenty-two to hit. Where did I put the yeah, side blocks? It's a tw a twenty-two. Uh, bite, bite, bite the dog. Uh, that's fifteen piercing damage, and it is grapple. And then it's a natural two on the claws. Okay. You got it? Yep. Okay, dripper number two on wool duck number number two. Uh, <laughs> the bite is another natural two. Uh, and this, uh, the claws. Uh, uh... Hello, where is it? Okay, it's a 15 to hit. Uh, that does hit. I know I haven't hit with a claws yet because I haven't taken the dice out. Uh, that's also 15 uh, damage, this one slashing. Okay. Yeah, flanking's better than I thought. I thought it had to be... Like... Complete opposite sides, but it doesn't. That's nope. cool. Okay, that's everything from them. 
Um, this one is going to finally spit out some acid at the gravel dog. No! Um, okay. You can all see that this this dripper here in the back does this like honestly kind of a burping sound uh and then out of its mouth comes this bright yellow substance that immediately begins to sizzle uh, on everything it touches the ground the wall, the wall behind it uh some of it ends up on, on the dog's uh feet and uh he's again just whining in pain Oh, wait. Dodging. Yes. Okay. Uh, it is going to keep dodging. And number four has a variety of targets to choose from. <laughs> no acid. <laughs> so upset. Okay, D4. Let's let's pick someone. I don't know where I put my other D4s, but I lost. Me, me. Okay. We're going to be biting Brooke and clawing uh, Virion. Haha, <laughs> screw your dog. Alright. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um, 17 to bite Brooke. I would say Virion's gonna... Because it's just when you make an attack, I said she would have used her... Um, Protection fighting there to use a reaction to give disadvantage anyway, but the thing has to be when it makes it makes the attack, not when it hits. Uh, the seventeen missiles. Yeah, that doesn't matter, but uh, so it's on an attempt at attacking. Yeah, so it'd have to be first. first. I see. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Good to know. Oh, yes. Brooke, now that the two of you are side by side, uh, Virion is like actively getting in the way. Uh, of this lizard that seems to take an issue with not being able to bite you and turns to claw her for a 19. 19 hits. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like trying to only hurt you. It's fine. <laughs> it's just what's happening. Um, it is a nine points of slashing damage. Round up or down for resistance? Uh, down. We got that little shadow you shout over. Wool dog time! Woo! All right. Who let the wool dogs out? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to run down here so that uh, these two are in flanking position. Uh, is this one within 20 feet of Virion? How do we count the anymore? diagonals? Would it have to move uh, we do over we do count the extra diagonals. I believe it would be yeah twenty five. Yeah. Okay. What if it was here? That's so meta though. <laughs> it's gonna stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would count. But... The wool dog wouldn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. So they're just going to attack like this. You wanna say if the wool dog hears the commands, he won't listen? He doesn't know the first thing about war. Pippa doesn't really know that, like, yeah, being close to Virion. No. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Like, Brooke has experienced it, but... Uh, so we'll, we'll do... Uh, we'll just do it in numerical order, I guess. We'll dog number one... Okay, is on going Dripper to one. ...attack with advantage... ...with its bite. Oh! <gasps> Natural 20! Oh, Ooh. snap! These, or, these wool dogs mean business. They mean business. They, they're, they're messing with a fellow dog. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> uh, that's six points of piercing damage. Six, got it. Number two is going to... Uh, yeah, I guess it'll stay right there and make an attack on... You know what? They're gonna They're going to team up on this one. It's gonna move right there. <laughs> and we'll attack Dripper one with advantage. Okay. Of 
for a 16. 16 hits. Okay. <laughs> this one does get an extra four. Uh, yes, four. For nine points of piercing damage. Wolf dog number three will attack it with advantage. Okay. For a ten. Oh, a ten misses. Come on, wool dog number three. <laughs> wool dog number three to... wants to make friends. <laughs> this one's gonna come down here, bark out some barks, and we'll attack with advantage on that one. This advantage counts, yeah. The other flanking immune counts. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Eleven misses, though. <laughs> um, wool dogs don't seem to be a breed of dog that has been bred for combat. Um, <laughs> but they're still being rather brave, uh, and sure. they are. They have come to the rescue. Uh, I suppose it would be like slightly, like their bodies would be smaller than the gravel dogs, but the wool like really just puffs them out, so, and they yeah. uh, kind of appear bigger. They're so cute. Uh, they would actually be very skinny underneath. <laughs> uh, <Like a> ferret. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yep. Uh, Squeak's gonna use held action to fly down here, a stinger at the ready, and is going to just try and impale it into this dripper. Uh, as Pip's gonna use bonus action to have Squeak attack. Ad advantage, I guess. Uh, yeah. Puppos. Puppos. These puppos are just advantage vending machines. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if that's for a 20. They're so friendly. A 20 hits. 1d4 plus 7. For a 9 points of piercing. And if it's not immune to poison, it needs to make a constitution saving throw. He is immune to poison. I I had a feeling. <laughs> okay, uh, then Pip is going to use an action to create bonfire right here. Get both of them in <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> Can I do that? <laughs> uh... Is it five feet? Four feet. I mean, it's in the middle of four squares. But <laughs> there are no squares in reality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really going to push my DRM as far as I can. <laughs> Swift would square. Uh, I guess. I guess you can. Just burn the wait, wait, what's the, what's the ability? <laughs> he, he wants to do, like, it's a five-foot square, right? But he's trying to put it uh, in a corner. Uh, <laughs> Alright, okay, so if I remember, <laughs> with areas of effect... Daggers? Like, if we like, if we have, like, a circle, uh, the area of effect affects any square that is at least 50% inside of that area. So, you know, like this. Right. So if you were to put a square like this oh, that's in just a quarter in here, of an area. It would be, yeah, it would be a quarter, so it would actually affect none of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, like a five foot radius circle, like a centered on a square, and now it's a three by three instead of right. a two by two. But like, this is specifically a five foot cube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Then. So no, I guess not. I guess not. I guess not. You can't. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> does, does this change what I want to do? Yes, it does. So that's concentration anyway. That would be dumb. Uh, oh, duh. We'll mind sliver on Dripper 2 for an intelligence save. <laughs> Net 20. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so smart. <laughs> what, what's the DC? Uh, 15. Okay, even <laughs> even with its minus uh, modifier, it does pass. 
<laughs> the dripper Bart just looks over at Pip and it's wearing glasses. <laughs> playing dragon chess. The most knowledgeable dripper. The dripper chess. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Pip's, Pip's just gonna like go back over here. Oh. <laughs> the dripper is too smart. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> professor, he knows things. Savavia's <laughs> <laughs> <The> turn. <laughs> yeah. Savavia runs up, uh, probably has like three arrows between her fingers, is gonna fire away. Let's go, let's go. Uh, Dripper 2 first. Which one were you targeting earlier, uh, Austin? Which one is the nerd? <laughs> this one's the Number nerd. Two? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's just. All right. Seventeen hits. Okay. Uh, let's see here. You're gonna break his glasses. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see without his glasses. <laughs> oh my god! You added a plus four. Yeah, it's a plus four. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Divamia too, like the closer she yeah. gets, uh, um, as as like as she gets close enough to hear Viren and Viren like notices her and begins to also direct her. Ah, uh, yeah, there's a noticeable difference. Nineteen on number two. Uh, math, got it. Ready for attack number two? Ready. Alrighty. Number two and number four are not doing so hot. That is misses. not gonna hit. Okay, let's go for number one. Okay, special attack on number one. Fourteen hits. Yay! <laughs> Good times. Eleven damage. Bolsa. Convenient. All right. Anything else that from Navamia? Yeah, no, sir. Okay, that brings us to Pontifex. Mm -hmm. Right on. Let's do it again. <laughs> um, I can't really save? see four too well, so he's going to do it on two this time. Uh, but yeah, Got DC it. 16, wisdom save. Is, uh, is 17. Um, then Pontifex is going to uh, move. <laughs> this rock is very crowded. Yeah, he's uh, he's gonna circle around over here, trying to keep some of the, some of the meat between him and, and the scary things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's a uh, this dripper, resisting the effect of your spell, just shrugs it off. Uh, uh, Brooke, you're next. Mm -hmm. I'll try to hit dripper for once. Okay. Uh, that is still flanking. It is. Not. Okay. 24 hits. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Fifteen damage. That Slashing. kills it. Ooh. <laughs> I walk over and do my second hit. I'm assuming that doesn't count as flanking, right? It does. Ooh. 19? Flanking dispensers, the 19 hits. All right. 14 damage. Flashing. So number two, the 14. Also kills it. Woo! Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> Rip nerd. All right, that's my turn, I think. Hey, 
Hey, Virion. All right. Um. <laughs> so many dogs. <laughs> the Hounds of War. <laughs> um. So this is not flanking because there's nothing on this other corner, correct? Uh, I'm sorry. It's gotta be on the. So this is not flanking because the line is the diagonal, right? Oh, it's not. Yeah, because it's. I think, so I think like the normal flanking. I think I was wrong. Before. It's a little confusing, but I think that when something is on a side, it goes across into the corner. So it would be like this for that dog, or this for that dog so all, all it is is if you can draw a straight line from one token like the center of one token to the center of the other token and they pass through either opposite like parallel sides or opposite corners oh, oopsie that's so, like the opposites so because this one doesn't pass through parallel sides from like here to this guy got it got it it's not flanking uh yeah i so luckily i gave dennis advantage on the last hit but he rolled the same number on both so he didn't yeah. matter Ah, that is correct, yes. Brushing up on how the grid works. Yes. Indeed, yes. Uh, that is not flanking. That's that's fine, that's whatever. I say as... You don't get free I'm flanking this move. time. We got it last time, it's fine. I'll take it. Uh, either way, uh, I'm gonna poke it with the rapier. Poke it. 25 hits. I guess I, guess you I hit. You don't even need it. No. And... I think I would know how my own abilities work. I'm sorry, playing a seventh level character for the first time in combat. Uh, it's your first combat. It is my first combat, yeah. It's been 51 seconds and I still don't know how mine works. So you're good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Radiant damage. <laughs> Radiant damage. <laughs> hey. <laughs> 14. 14. Okay. You stab this dripper uh, through one of its legs. You pin it to the ground. Uh, it's very badly hurt. Anything else? That is going to be my turn. Then it's squeak. It's squeak time. Squeak attack! <laughs> squeak attack. After Pip tells me to. Yeah. Yeah, to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Pip is the warlord of <laughs> Squeak. <laughs> it's a coming. <laughs> okay. Dodge, by the way. So, um, <laughs> Dodge. Yeah, okay, yours to key. Uh, this one is going to disengage. And nope, not deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and it's coming over here instead. Okay. Number three. <laughs> it's going to attempt to bite the wolf dog that has come up to it. Um, that is a 25 to hit. Pretty sure that it's a wool dog. Okay, Austin. Yeah? 12 damage of the piercing variety. To wool oh. dog number four. Oh, buddy. Okay. And it is grappled. Oh, buddy. Oh. <gasps> so, not 20 uh, on the claw. Uh? Oh, no. That's oh, no. not good. This one was grappling. One of mine. Oh yes, Did it's it been let go. With him? No, okay. it's been let go. Okay. Okay, not twenty on the claw. Yes. <laughs> uh, nineteen slashing damage. Oh. <laughs> it it puffs. It puffs. It puffs. Oh. The wool dog puffs out of existence and there's just a bunch of like wool that flies everywhere <laughs> oh. <laughs> just just bits of it oh, and then it all disappears 
Uh, the dripper looks very annoyed at what it was biting has disappeared. <laughs> This is the dog again, who is uh, dodging. Uh, and now it's wool dog time. Well, luckily, my wool dogs are speedy. <laughs> they are! Do -do 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 -do. They are fast! <laughs> 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 Squeak is like, wait, take me with you! I wasn't expecting him to leave. And so he's gonna get the wolf dog like gingerly cuss cup him in in its mouth and bring him over here. Yes, but it would be an action from that particular wolf dog. Mm. Yeah, worth it. Okay. <laughs> um then the wolf dog will will just drop him off right there. Uh, this one will attack with advantage on Dripper 1. Okay. Can't believe you have become the Pudgy of this campaign. I am the Pudgy now. 14. 14 hits. Okay. Uh, Eight Panthers uh, soon. Yeah, just... I showed mercy this time. <laughs> 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 Only four creatures. <laughs> um... Plus Dennis, three. can you feel the flashbacks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's nine points of damage. Uh, is this, uh, oh, it's number three. Well, Pip summoning a bunch of panthers might have, like, some PTSD flashes from Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe panthers in specific is one we should have born. <laughs> 24 hits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And By the way, was the inspiration dice placed up here, or did no, someone not. lose it? Which one? Like the one on the shelf? On the shelf. Oh yeah, we we decided to preserve that one because I think I think it turned a nat one into a nat twenty. Ah. And so everybody ah. was really excited about it, and we were like, we a need to preserve it. Historic moment. Yeah, and so we put it under the sunset. Hey, Joey, do you see the sunset above the bookshelf? <laughs> I do. Isn't it beautiful? It's gorgeous. Beautiful sunset. <laughs> like the horse. <laughs> Nothing unusual about it. <laughs> and the any Pontifex portrait. <laughs> <laughs> when you accidentally turn on your front-facing camera. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, <laughs> that's nine points of damage on that uh -huh. one, uh, and that's the end of their turns. Did you do nine damage twice? You did. I did. Okay. Uh, there is a battle of biting over here. And Squeak I imagine that, yeah, P <laughs> Squeak joins in <laughs> with the uh, stabbing. Squeak uses tail whip. <gasps> yes. Oh, it's super effective! <laughs> it's super effective. Uh, but it's not flanking. Okay, okay. It is not. Who needs advantage? Who, Who needs, needs advantage? It? Oh, I don't shame even that they're need immune to poison. to poison, yeah. yeah. The devils have our own luck. Six. <laughs> <laughs> you are so close to killing it. <laughs> Oh no, the crit could have been it, but you're all. Well, how like much shit. of a nerd is this one? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, is this. Yeah, uh, Mind Sliver. Okay, Intelligence Save. Yeah. Are they just all a bunch of nerds? Right. Like brain. Not. This is not a natural 20. We have a 10. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you kill it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt animals, you animal? Oh no. <laughs> As its brain ruptures. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt the cute one. I only eat the cute ones. I mean, wait! What? <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> 
inverse vegan. Hold on. Okay, I'm done. The moment walks up, pulls out the four arrows remaining from Drifter 2, and then, uh, yeah, makes, makes a long shot for Drifter number 3 from half court. Here we go. <laughs> I think it's a it's a longbow, right? So like it is a longbow, yeah. Yeah, yeah she that, that's easy. That's easy for her. Seventeen hits. Let's go. Fifteen damage. Noted and recorded. Okay, and then did the you add the plus four? I added the plus four. Okay. And then the second pew pew. Second pew pew. 18 hits. The pew pew is continuing new use. <laughs> <laughs> Solid shot. Would you like to use your feature to also hit the gravel dog? No! <laughs> <laughs> End of turn! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Boy, I am a big fan of that plus four to damage. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I remember, I remember telling Joy, okay, we can go with it, but it seems a bit too powerful, and so like we'll see. And now I'm sitting here, and we're surrounded by dogs, and I'm thinking, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Like, it would have been fine if it were for all oh, the other yeah. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> this, this can be far worse. <laughs> <laughs> this is way worse. <laughs> Pontifex. <laughs> Oh, everything is so far away, and he's gonna start <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. Oh, there. What's this deal? Too far. <laughs> Too far. Hey, okay. Uh, don't worry, everyone. I'm coming. Pontifex <laughs> is here to save the day, and he's gonna. <laughs> Oh, that's my dash. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I like you. Stretch. You're straight in your oh, back. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's been just a little bit too long. Ah. Yes, I've been walking all day. Oh, what are we doing again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dripper. Oh, here comes Toll the Dead in six seconds from now. <laughs> <laughs> just casting my spell. Stand uh, winding still? up the bleeping. <laughs> Stay, wait. I do feel pontifex. No. Nope. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Still too far. Damn it. <laughs> it, it. It's coming. It's coming. The pontifex bleeping is, is building coming. up. I'm sure I'll still be alive by the time you get over there. It is fine. It's only surrounded by like thousands of things <laughs> doing plus 20 to everything. <laughs> It's Brooke. fine. I do agree with Pontifex, so let's get her running. And then. Uh... trying to wind up the. It comes out as a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it. Alright, that's my turn. Close enough. Virion. Alright. It's going to. Is Firion oh, an Eevee then. evolution? I mean, I could be. <laughs> you don't know that. <clears throat> nope. The square would be 60. Yeah. Right there. Uh, I think she's gonna try to hit it with a rock again. If she can. Yeah, Coop that's a rock. There's lots of rocks. rocks. Yeah. Oh nope. no. That's fine. Bonk. It just Can't win them all. It just bounces off. Oh, we tried. That's my turn. Hip, it looks like somebody in this party is trying to weaponize rocks. <laughs> Someone other than you. Oh. 
I have so much to teach you. <laughs> right. While she's way over there, let's have a talk. Like, I am the old thing, and now she's older than me, and then you have the rock thing, and now she's like taking all of your rocks. I feel like we need to get rid of her. Shh, quiet, <laughs> Professor. We're fighting here. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm gonna get you. Just you wait. <laughs> she even had the devil thing, babe. No. Oh. That's like your uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> the thing that stole my parents from me? Yeah. He tossed your head and then she's... I'm just saying. Oh my god. Okay, this one is also disengaging and moving away. It's going over the wall. All lizard-like. Um, do you guys plan to give chase? Hmm. The wall dogs might. They're vicious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well then, Face wall dogs. Blood. <laughs> so savage and yet so fluffy. <laughs> it can never run far enough. <laughs> they are nervous. Oh, horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Here's the second one. Oh, head it hits. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Okay. I. I. It's guaranteed that the dogs are gonna get it eventually. <laughs> uh, it is like four hit points away from death. <laughs> And cannot outrun the the bulldogs. So it just pretends to be dead. They were so vicious. Just hey, covered in blood. Austin, just describe to me how the bulldogs end this dripper's life. <laughs> uh, like piranhas, you know? They just <laughs> they all just <laughs> you know up. as bulldogs do. You know as bulldogs do, just. As uh, within the blink of an eye, they all cover it, and you just see a cloud of wool. And when the cloud <laughs> disappears, there's just a skeleton. <laughs> that's the only thing that's left. <laughs> and then they disappear, <laughs> having accomplished oh. their job. But yeah, they they fade out of existence. But uh, uh, Pepe, roll a perception check. Out of existence, but not out of our hearts. <laughs> 14. 14? Okay. Um, <clears throat> right before they vanish, uh, seemingly just turning into dust themselves, uh, one of the bulldogs, and you could have sworn that it just winked at you. What? Oh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> uh, take Ooh. these minis, you will need them again in the okay. future. <laughs> Catch up, old them. man. <laughs> Can I get another bag? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll keep these separate. Here you go. Your animal you. bag. Don't forget this wool dog mini over here that's actually with the health, HP, HP and stuff for initiative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do I keep that in the bag as well? Do you want it in a different bag or...? What would, what would be most convenient for you? Uh, you can keep it on the on the I'll, table if you want. Really? Okay. I'll yeah, you can also have, like, do you want me to do a separate bag for every animal? Or whatever you want. Nah, if you want bags, you I'll, tell me. I'll just keep a menagerie down <coughs> here. Then... Okay. Yeah. All right. With the uh, drippers taken care of, uh, um, each of you at your own pace, uh, eventually gathering in the 
old, old ruins of this building. Uh, there's really just like two walls and a half still standing. No trace of whatever furniture might have been here a long time ago. Uh, it's definitely been centuries until anyone, uh, since anyone was last here. Um, and in the corner, there is this shaking dog that looks very different from the ones that have just come to assist Pip. Uh, as described before, this one is straight up just covered in gravel from head to toes. Um, and like, as it's shivering, there's dust just constantly falling off of it. Uh, and sort of like there's a little cloud constantly following it. Um, and the dog looks scared, but like, it's, it's eyes as they, they slowly stop on each of you. It, you can see that there's some intelligence uh, and some, like, understanding uh, that you guys just helped it. But it, it doesn't quite approach. Hey, buddy, you okay? The, uh, the, the uh, immediately the dog is focused on you, Bip. Uh, the ears perk up. The tail stands perfectly still for a few seconds, and then he just starts wagging like crazy. Uh, and uh, the dog will take like one cautious step in your direction, but uh, remains, for the most part, pressed uh, against the the wall as it, it barks back uh, quite excitedly, uh, say, uh, saying, ah, uh, "Hello." Hey, you're safe now. Uh, I. I, I, I understand you. I understand. Yeah. I understand you. Yeah, I speak dog. Oh, I speak dog. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence! Do, uh, do you do you do you have a name? Do you have a family? Are you lost? Uh, uh I have a name. Yes. Um, and um, I I, I lost. Yes. Lost. Mm. Oh no. Well, I I have a habit of trying to get lost animals back home and then inevitably getting us all in trouble. <laughs> You're in luck. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what is he saying, Pip? What is he saying? He's lost. Bark, I'm gonna bark, help bark. him get home. Ask him first where his home is. Where's your home? You can get closer. Somewhere? I don't, don't have really to yell. know where I am. Uh, so I have to ask, are you made of rock or just covered in rocks? Um, yes. Cool. <laughs> nice. Um, I... I have a request. Uh huh? Please, if, if you would be so kind, could you scratch yeah. me under the chin? Yes, of I'm, course. I'm desperate for affection. <laughs> scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. Oh, uh, oh, uh, Sounds yes. like sandpaper. It's, it scratches back. <laughs> it cuts. It scratches back. <laughs> There's like as you scratch, there's there's dust and small pebbles that just like they fall off. It feels like you're digging a hole inside of this dog, but the gravel is oh, just oh. never ending. Like you don't actually ever make a hole. Ah, oh, it's it's not quite like when Dad scratches me, but it's good. Oh, thank you. So what happened? How'd you how'd you get way out here? Oh, um, Pip, by the way, as you approach and you're, you're scratching the, the dog under the chin, uh, there is a collar around this, uh, this, oh. uh, it, it, it was kind of hard to see. There was a lot of, gra of, of gravel and dust on it. Um, but there, there is a collar. If that collar says Orm, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> There's a collar with a name <laughs> it's tag. It's always Orm. <laughs> Do you dogs read are it? Orm. <laughs> Turns out Orm is just Ladarian for dog. <laughs> Do you read right. it? <laughs> Let's see. It says... Uh, Orm Tinheart! <laughs> it's, no. it's actually the script you cannot understand. Uh, Wait, I'm what? pretty sure you can't. Uh, yeah. 
kind of army. Ah. Oh, I haven't given Devamia the uh, <clears throat> the Ladarian languages that she speaks. Uh, I need to look at my notes. I'll, I'll have to add them to the cards. Alex can. knows every single language. Uh, she I'm just saying indeed. it's not too late to abandon this and go get Alex instead. <laughs> uh, so, babe, since, since you can't read what's on the color, uh, you, you call over uh, Devamia. Um, uh, who, will, who will gladly come over and also pet the dog uh, and uh, uh, she will say uh, yeah um, so this is Atarian and it is literally the word for cuddles <gasps> is that your name or is that your dad's name <laughs> uh, it's my name and if I, um, I, I don't mean to brag, but I am actually the goodest girl. I believe you. <laughs> uh, cuddles rolls over. Scritchy, scritchy, scritchy. <laughs> Is that all the collar says? Yes. What a horrible collar. <laughs> <laughs> no phone number or anything. <laughs> Gary will kind of lean over, lean over to Brooke and just, I'm assuming this isn't the friend that you were looking for. Mm -mm. Mm. Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, so... I'd like you to meet Cuddles. All right, and what does Cuddles need? Cuddles needs to find her dad. That's... Okay. So we're gonna do that. <laughs> I don't... No, I'm we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> you you can't say no to that face. <laughs> she has I mean... very big puppy eyes. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. There is time for this, and there is time for more important things. Right now, it is time for Tekka. Mm. Okay, I, I if do the dog like is Tekka comfortable lot. enough and needs us bad enough, it can come with us just to stay safe. But when it comes to it, we will go our separate ways to save Tekka. Mm. Okay. Um. Let me let me talk to let me talk to Cuddles. Cuddles. That's me. Uh, how far away is your home? Do you know what happened? Um, uh, mm, I don't know which way it is. But but uh, if I see it, I will know. How long have you been lost? Um, the entire day. A whole day. A whole day. How did you get lost? Um, we were walking, and then suddenly, Dad was gone. Just, just poof. Mm hmm. Well, I, I turned around, and then I turned around again. And he wasn't there anymore. Okay, what's your dad look like? Um... He has... Hands. Okay. Like yours. Small? Uh, bigger. Like... Like his? Points at Brooke. Mm, yeah. About that tall? Uh, taller. Taller? And has a mouth like yours. But louder? But louder. Big, tall, loud. Was he made of rocks? <laughs> uh, no. That is not made of rocks. Silly. 
I'm sorry to interrupt, guys. I gotta go. Professor! Oh, yeah. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going My to wrap bad. up the session, like, uh, yeah, yeah, in a no few minutes, anyway. Is, is anything important on this, I can get in the recap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Austin. I'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, I'll see yeah. you guys next week. Have a good rest of the session. Thank you. Bye, Matt. Bye-bye. Uh, Pip is relaying this information to the others now. I feel like this is not the first time that Pip has found out that animals are bad at describing people. Am I crazy? Yeah. I feel like it's come up before. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pip, but we will... We don't have time for this. But... Mm. Okay, we've... We've got something to do, Cuddles. But if you want, you can come with us and maybe afterwards we could help you find your dad. Can I? Of course. I, I don't know where to go. So I just follow? Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. More scratches. Uh-huh. Uh scratch, scratch, scratch. Uh, and yeah, Cuddles will stick by your side, Pip, the entire time. Um, she is, um, <clears throat> she is, she's obviously very friendly, um, but, and not very combat oriented. And like every time for the rest of your journey that like you hear any noise or there's some movement somewhere, uh, she immediately just hides behind your legs. Uh, oh, buddy. Her, her tail is is kept low to the ground, and she doesn't really like move until uh, it's clear that there is no danger uh, coming. She's just a baby. Uh, so How she's with you, you for baby? just. Oh, you're asking for her age? Yeah. I am an adult. Okay. <laughs> she has no I'm idea not. how many years old she is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yeah, we're we're going to end the session with you guys setting up the tower for the night. Uh, cool. and, we, and we can just continue next time from there. We found Cuddles! Cuddles? Yeah. She's it's lost! Uh, what happened but... to her daddy? Thank you for being here today. Uh, I Thanks believe... for DMing. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I believe that uh, next session... Well, sorry. No, let me ask. Is next session good for, for everybody? Mm -hmm. Next Sunday, you mean? 20, yes, 26th. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, then I will see you then. I'm going to call the session off now. So thank you again for being here. And thank you for watching. Anyone who has tuned in. I'll see you again next week. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Have a good one.